Shalom. I'm Officer George with TTIC. We'll start out by reading our disclaimer. TTIC, also known as the Truth in Christ, is a Bible-based organization. We are not affiliated with any other Israelite group. We teach the Bible as it is written. We are not a hate group, nor do we teach violence. We do not condone any acts of hate or violence against any race, ethnicity, gender, and religious group. We firmly believe in abiding by the laws of the city and state. If you witness any member of TTIC committing a crime, please contact us in the proper authorities. Thank you. All righty. So long, go sign Christ. Bless to y'all brothers and sisters. Happy Sabbath in here and happy Sabbath out there, brothers and sisters. All righty. Today's class is improving your physical and mental, mental health. Improving your physical and mental health. I hope y'all get something out of today's uh, class. Uh, we're going to go through uh, some of the dietary. Uh, we're going to go through some uh, scriptures on dealing with your with your mind and everything. So as we're going through this, brothers and sisters, please write you some notes. Write down some notes. Learn. Listen. I right, where you can go back to these notes and refer to what we was talking about. Give me Psalms 104 and... 14, please. The book of Psalms, chapter 104 and 14. Uh -huh. He suffered no man to do them wrong. Yea, he reproved kings. Psalms 104. 104. 104. <laughs> 14, come on. Psalms 104. In 14. He causes the grass to grow for the cattle and herbs for the service of man. And he caused the he caused the grass to grow for cattle and the herbs for the service of man. Read. That he may bring forth food out of the earth. That he may bring forth food out of the earth. Alright. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to a herb chart and we're gonna go through some of the uses of herb. Alright. This particular where we at is it's called the herb exchange. Twelve uses and interesting use for herbs. All right, unusual and interesting use for herbs. I'm sorry. All right, so Officer George gonna guide us through that. Go ahead, Officer. Okay, it says uh, when many people think of herbs, they think of cooking. There are so many other uses of them. For example, herb extracts like CBD oils. From companies like Gobi.com are useful in treating mental health issues, skin and, and skin problems, and even reduce chronic pain symptoms. Take the list of herbs below, and you have several natural ways to solve your everyday ailments. Go ahead and treat your acne with basil, clean your toilets with thyme, and build your bones with marjoram. Have fun exploring new ways to use herbs. All right, just stick right there. there okay, we're going to look at rosemary. Rosemary is good uh, to keep mosquitoes away. It's a mosquito deterrent. And hair rinse. And to keep mosquitoes away from your porch and other areas where you like to uh, entertain guests, try growing rosemary in close proximity. Mosquitoes do not like rosemary, and so they will stay clear of the area. Another great use for rosemary is in hair rinse to strengthen your hair and eliminate pesky dandruff. So everybody see that? So uh, rosemary is used for mosquitoes. Uh, like, like everybody like to barbecue, right? Yeah. And everybody like to sit out and have cookouts in their backyard, right? You put that rosemary out there, plant it around, mm -hmm. it keeps those mosquitoes away. And and also saves you hundreds of dollars of bad nails of oh, mosquitoes man. or uh, mosquitoes. Oh, that uh, repellent? Repellent. That's what I was looking for. Thank you, man. Yes. So you, you will save hundreds of dollars by doing that. By just planting this herb. Yep. People, when they think about herb, what they think about? Marijuana. Wow. Marriage and water. But that herb is for me. It's not. We're going to show you that today, too, brothers and sisters. Yeah. All right. Uh, go to, go, uh, go ahead to the next one. Okay, we're going to look at lemon balm. 
This fight is a fatigue tr treatment. It's, for, it's a what? A fatigue treatment. So lemon balm is a fatigue treatment. It's to, to reduce your fatigue, make a tea out of equal parts of lemon balm, raspberry leaf, nettle, or metal, probably metal, and oak tops. Metal. Uh, and add a, it says add one fourth part of each of slice and sifted ginger and licorice. Re this reboots your energy by drinking three cups every day. So you see that? So this is, what is that called? Lemon balm? Lemon balm. Lemon balm helps give you energy. That's another herb, guys, that you can use straight up to help give you energy. Because one thing we don't know is, when we use it, we had these herbs back in the biblical days. Yep. Moses, before Moses, even uh, even uh, in Adam's times, Adam or uh, uh, Noah, they already had healing me mechanisms like the herbs. Yeah. You go get these herbs and you don't have to worry about going to the uh, pharmacy. Because what happens when you go to the pharmacy? Think about that. What do they do when, the, when you go to the pharmacies? You are getting, you getting that herb mixed with other things. And you don't really know what you're putting mm -hmm. in your what? Mm -hmm. Your body. You don't know what you're putting in your body. For us as Israelites, it's very, it's very important that we Follow the clean and unclean. Hold on, while I'm saying that, give me hold that. Give me, uh, give me uh, Leviticus eleven and forty four, please. Leviticus eleven and forty four. The book of Leviticus, chapter eleven, verse forty four. It's for I am the Lord your God. Ye shall therefore sanctify yourselves, mm -hmm. and ye shall be holy. For I am holy. Read. Neither shall you defile yourselves with any manner of creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Read. For I am the Lord that bringeth you up out of the land of Egypt to be your God. Uh huh. Ye shall therefore be holy, for I am holy. Jump to 47. To make a difference. To make a what? To make a difference. Read. Between the unclean and the clean. So we got to make a difference between the unclean and the clean. That's why we waking up, guys. That's what the whole reason we wake it up to make a difference between the clean and unclean things that we can eat and drink. That's right. Breathe. And between the beast that may be eaten. The beast that may be eaten. And the beast that may not be eaten. See, that, that's, that's the whole point of us waking up and us gathering together. We got to gather together with some understand, men with understanding yeah, right. so we can know these things, right? Yeah. So now let's go back to back to where we was. We back at the uh, the herb exchange chart. Let's go back to that. Uh, the next herb mm -hmm. would be marjoram. 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 Builds strong bones. Mm -hmm. What it do? It builds strong bones. Mm -hmm. Marjoram is an herb similar to oregano that is often used in Mediterranean cooking. Mm -hmm. And we like it, don't we? Uh -huh. <laughs> yep. As well as health and beauty products because marjoram contains about 520% of the recommended daily intake of vitamin K. So you get your vitamin K through, what is it, Marjor marjoram? Marjoram. You, you get your vitamin K through this. Watch this. It can contribute to building strong bones. So your bones can get built up. What they tell you the, what builds up strong bones? Milk. Milk. But right here, this 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 herb. herb does the same thing. Because you know, when in the biblical days, what type of milk did we drink? Go, go, we draw goat milk, all praises, all praises in the spirit. We draw goat milk. So, so we didn't drink cow's milk. We draw goat milk. So, what we getting out of that goat milk, mm -hmm. which is I think was vitamin D, is that what they say out of the goat milk? I'm not sure either. I'm not going. I'm not with vitamin D and calcium. Calcium probably vitamin D. Yeah, and, and goat was probably eating that plant. You see what I got? <laughs> all praises, bring it out. You see what I mean? Bro, goat is probably eating that plant. Mm -hmm. All right. So now, with that being said, let's go to the next one, Austin. Oh, yeah. And also, just right at the end, it, this, this building strong bones offsets and, or delays osteoporosis. That's oh, the weakening of the bone. That's the weakness of the bone. So you see that just with knowing these things, our people can stop or uh, 
getting where they where they bent over or, mm-hmm. or where they where they ain't got no strength uh, uh no bones they soon as they hit something they bone break yeah you know we, we yeah. bones so these are things that we can learn man go to the next one also oregano oregano everybody heard of oregano right yeah watch this fights the common cold and what it does it fights the common cold then hold on now what do we use usually use oregano for because y'all women cook what do we use oregano mm-hmm. for Italian food. Italian foods. Mm-hmm. Okay, see, so look, I was yours, you know, he knows. Yeah. <laughs> He's your more idea on our crew. He's the chef, y'all. So he knows. So as usual, what also? I, I, in, in Italian food. Mostly Italian, Italian food, food, right? So, Reed, go ahead. It says oregano, the oil of oregano helps. No, no, start from the beginning because I might interrupt people from hearing what you say. It says the oil of oregano helps to drain sinuses. And reduce inflammation. You need some of that. Go ahead. Yes, sir. Yes. So it's perfect for fighting the common cold. It's perfect for fighting the common cold. Next time you have a cold, try placing a few drops of oregano oil under the tongue. Uh huh. Or else put a few drops in a glass of water before drinking. Everybody heard it. So you use oregano when you have a cold. Put a couple of drops of the oil in the bo- in the uh, what in a cup. Or under the tongue, under right? The tongue, yeah. Everybody heard it, right? Everybody try that next time you have a cold. Try that. Before you go out and buy a Robitussin or NyQuil, mm-hmm. try that. Just see what happens. Do do? What, can you, what can hurt you? Well, go to the doctor make sure you're not allergic to a reg- yeah. oregano first. Yeah. If yeah. you're not allergic to it, then try it, guys. That's right. All right, let's go to the next one, officer. Peppermint. Peppermint. Everybody like peppermint, right? I don't know who. <laughs> Go ahead. <I> was a <laughs> peppermint soothes headaches. It does what? Soothes headaches. This is not talking about the peppermint candy, guys. We're talking about the herb peppermint, so I can't eat them. I'm messing with you. Yeah, is, so the herb peppermint, it soothes headaches. Come on. Since peppermint is a popular herb used in, in as an uh, aromatherapy uh-huh. to soothe headaches and relieve tension. Read. To soothe a pounding headache. The, so people with what? Migraines. Yeah. Brothers with migraines. We got like Officer Jabali, he gets those migraines. That's something that he might need to try. Peppermint. That peppermint herb that it help soothe a headache. Head, 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 head. Come on. It says add five to seven Drops of peppermint oil to a small bowl of ice water. Three. It says dip a washcloth in the mixture, wring it out, and then apply the washcloth to your forehead Woo. for about 15, 10 to 15 minutes. Oh, wow. Another common way of used a lot, utilizing this peppermint soothing properties is to put several drops of peppermint oil on a washcloth and bring it in the shower with you for a minty steam. Did you see that? So, hey, I'm, I'm giving y'all some ideas, y'all. Y'all go back and watch this class and y'all can do, look these things up yourself, man. These are things that we need to do. Go to the next one, officer. We got basil. Basil. <coughs> Come on. It's an antibacterial and acne treatment. So it's antibacterial and acne. Any of y'all brothers and sisters have acne or, or, or what else is it? Antibacterial. Antibacterial. And, and acne. Go ahead. It says basil is great for treating acne and other infectious infections because of its antibacterial and anti-inflammatory properties. Mm-hmm. For a natural acne treatment solution, simply soak fresh basil leaves in hot water for 20 to 30 minutes. Uh, we ain't, we ain't, we'll give, they can go, they can watch, they can go watch it themselves. So let's go to the next one. But they, can, they can get that information themselves. Let's go to the next one. Tarragon. Tarragon. Tarragon, I'm sorry. Tarragon. Uh-huh. This just says mouth number. I don't know. Tarragon is a very useful and versatile. Although it shouldn't replace your dentist. It, it's for when you have toothache, guys. I, it's, it's, it's what it is. Go ahead, watch it. So in ancient times, people used to chew on tarragon when they had toothache. Did you see that? Go ahead. This is because tarragon has the ability to numb the mouth uh, in a natural way. See the, the numb. So, so. So you don't need cocaine. <laughs> you, don't, you don't need cocaine. <laughs> so yeah, that's what people know. I'm, really, that's, I'm just saying. I'm, I'm just. I'm just being real. Well, they got the oral gel. Yeah, that, yeah. Some kind of cane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know there you go. You see what I mean? But go ahead, read. <laughs> <laughs> Time you have a toothache. Uh, use this stuff. It says try reducing your pain with tarragon. Tarragon uh, says toothache is certainly something you would want to see your dentist. 
was it, a lot? Orlando. Orlando about that the root cause it could lead to something more severe. Okay, so let us go to the next. Yeah. So, uh, so, so, what was that? Uh, basil. The so, tarragon was. Oh uh, no, tarragon. tarragon. Yeah, that's good for two base. So everybody, listen to these things. Watch this. The next one is what? Phenol. Phenol. A breath freshener. Oh. Yeah. Some of us, <laughs> some of, give us some of that y'all. We're being off to us over here, we over here kicking. The whole room is still low. All right, so we get some of that figure, all right? Hold on, let me do it. Y'all was doing over there, bro. There you go, hell. I got you got the pepper. Yeah, I got the pepper right, right here. I'm right. talking crazy. I might be killing you over here. All right, let's go, man. <laughs> Phenol seeds have the ability to stimulate saliva production. Mm. Which helps to eliminate bad breath. Mm. So it makes you, it makes you, uh, it makes you uh, bring up more, more wet, mm -hmm. more juicy. Go ahead. Yeah. Next time, you, this is next time you eat a meal with garlic or other pungent foods. Simply pop a small handful of seeds into your mouth to freshen your breath naturally. That's powerful. That's, right. that's powerful, guys. Pino seeds. Let's go to the next one. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> Fine. It's a household cleaner. It's T H Y M E. All right. It's a household what? Cleaner. Read. Thyme is a natural disinfectant, an antiseptic, due to the oil called thymol, thymol, mm -hmm. which it contains. Rather than using harsh toxic chemicals, cleaners around your house. Try using thyme instead. Simply add fresh thyme to boiling water, and then mix with a light vegetable-based uh, soap. Wow. Come on. Pour the solution into a spray bottle and use it to clean hard surfaces in your bathroom, kitchen, or other areas of the house. We got to try it. We got to try it. Hey, hey, if that can save me a little money, I'll try it. Yeah. You know, what, how hard is it to, uh, to boil some water, you know, and, and, and a little, little soap? Hey, come on, man. These are good things, man. Watch this. Let's go to the next one. All natural. Parsley. Parsley. Parsley removes dark circles under the eyes. So that's that's you, brother, that's you brothers and sisters when y'all when we start to get a little older, like like I am right now. When you start to get a little older, hey, you put that parsley on your eye to take the the to put your natural what color back. A lot of people get right to uh, a lot of people get that like people wear glasses sometimes, but they get those dark. Things on the eyes and on their nose. Maybe you can use that for that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it, it could help you. A lot of people that don't get sleep, they start getting that those black uh rings, rings around your eyes. So that that that's this is read that again, parsley. Read that again. It says parsley removes dark circles under the eyes. Parsley is often added to the beauty products because it contains vitamin K. Chlorophyll, vitamin C. I mean, oh no, you're right. Yeah, vitamin, vitamin K. K I'm sorry. Chlorophyll, vitamin C, and other active compounds that help to lighten and tighten the skin. It also works great as an anti-inflammatory agent. So it's an anti-inflammatory agent. All right, it, it, it helps take the sting out of the uh, your burning. You know, you have that burning sensation. All right, read. And it says, uh, it says, next time you have dark circles under your eyes. Try spreading crushed parsley on, uh, uh, on your skin. Okay, go ahead. The next one is saffron. Push it. There you go. Go ahead. It says saffron. It just says a uh, red colorant. Rather than purchasing red dye 20, which is derived from crushed red ants. The crushed red what? Ants. See, a lot of y'all don't even understand that. Right. Like when we get our color, our color, like you get red M&Ms. Yeah. We're eating ants. And they call it a number 36. Yes, they call it number 36, yeah, a number, number five, yeah, number nine. Yeah, a number, yeah. Or red number nine. Yeah. Or, or let me give you another example. Y'all women, like my wife, she don't wear it, her mama don't wear it. But why the women that wear those red lipsticks? That's coming from red ants. Oh, wow. Ant juice on the lips. Yeah. <laughs> Man. 
Red and two. Red and two. Go ahead, officer. Read that again one more time. Red, red and tastes good, didn't it? This is rather than. <laughs> and even it was good. Red, rather than purchasing red dye 20, which is derived from crushed red ants, mm -hmm. try sounder options for dyeing fabrics and other materials. A small amount of crushed saffron will ensure a dark, rosy tint naturally. You see that right there? Wow. So let's go to the next one. Mint keeps mice away. Mint does what? Keeps mice away. So mint help keep mice away. What else does it do? It says although most humans love the smell of mint, Three. mice absolutely hate it. They hate it. Keep uh, it says it keeps mice away from your home by scattering crushed mint or mint oil around problem areas. Everybody see that. So the herb mint, you can crush, you can crush you some mint. And if you have mouses around your house or it going in your house, just take some crushed mint and sprinkle it all the way around your house, all the way around your house, around the line of your house. Don't miss a spot. Mm -hmm. I don't know how often you have to do it, but just do it. I say maybe do it every three months, every two months, whatever it takes. Whatever it takes. Keep your mouse away. People say, well, I can just go get me uh, 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 with the pet, pest uh, 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 control. Yeah. Why? Right. Spend money. Spend money. All that money. Why right. spend all that money? Y'all got me? All right. Is that it, officer? That's I think, it, I think that's, that's, that's it. Okay, well, so with that, with that, I'm going to uh, give me one more minute because I got one more thing. One second. All right, instead of me pulling it up on here, I want you to read this for me. This is uh, nine natural, uh, what's that? What does that say? It says nature is nature, nine most, nine powerful, most powerful medicinal plants and the science behind them. All right, let's go ahead, go ahead, scroll, scroll up, scroll up, start right there. Okay, it says, uh, we scoured through histories of herbal studies for you. Today we live in a time when manufactured medicines and prescriptions prevail, but do they have to be the only approach to healing? Even with all these engineered options at our fingertips, many people find themselves turning back to the me medicinal plants that started it all. Herbal remedies have the ability to heal and to boost physical and mental well-being. In fact, at the beginning of the 21st century, 11% of the 252 drugs considered basic and essential for the World Health Organization were exclusively of flowering, flowering plant origins. Drugs like codeine, quinine, morphine, all contain plant derivative ingredients, derived ingredients. While these manufactured drugs have certainly become a paramount have become paramount in our lives, it can be comforting to know that the power of nature is on your side, is on our side, and these herbal choices are available to uh, complement our health practices. But the extent of the power they hold is also still explored. These alternatives aren't cure-alls and they aren't perfect. Many carry the same risks and side effects as manufactured medicines. Many of them are sold with unfounded promises. However, many herbs and teas offer harmless and subtle ways to improve the health. Pay attention to what the evidence says about each herb effectiveness as well as its potential interactions or safety issues. Avoid using herbs for infants and children and for those who are pregnant and breastfeeding. Most herbs haven't been tested for safety for those who are vulnerable, and, try, and trying herbs isn't worth the risk. With this cautionary tale in mind, choosing the right plant can seem difficult to someone who simply wants to feel better without taking medicine. That's why, with the help of specialists, Deborah Rose Wilson, we're looking at the most effective and therapeutic plants which have strong scientific evidence to support their safe use. 
making decisions about the herbs, along with more traditional medical medicinal uh, approaches, is something you and your healthcare uh, practitioner can address together. At times, Wilson notes, ingesting the plants can have even less risk than taking concentrated manufactured supplements, as there are more risk, as there is more of contamination of the product with the manufacturing process. Uh -huh. It's a wonderful way to experience their, effect of, uh, their effects and satisfaction of growing them yourselves. Uh -huh. Herbs can also be a way to add a needed nutrient. However, both plants and supplements, which aren't regulated by the Food and Drug Administration for safety and quality, can have questionable dosage and might have a risk of contamination. Keep this in mind before choosing supplements from the shelf. If you'd like to add some uh, medicinal plants to your wellness re uh, regime, Wilson sifts through the latest studies and provides her own rate, uh, rate, rate her own ratings of uh, systems for our list. These plants have the most numerous high quality studies and are safer choices among herbal remedies. Mm -hmm. She marked zero as unsafe with no research and five is completely safe with ample research. Okay. Many of these plants are somewhere between three and four, according to Wilson. We hope these guys will act as a strong point to those who wish to integrate herbal remedies into their lives and arrive armed with knowledge. As always, speak with your doctor before starting a new health treatment. So you see that thing right there? So herbs is a way for you to get what? Healthy. It's a, it's a way for you to get healthy. It's a way to also boost your mind, your um, your mind, um, mm -hmm. make your mind strong and everything, right? And clear. Oh, I'll praise it. And clear. Exactly. All right. So, for better, thank you, Officer George. Great job. Give me Genesis chapter 9, verse 1, Officer George. So, now we're going we're gonna to get off into the lesson a little bit more. The book of Genesis, chapter 9, verse 1. Yeah. And God blessed Noah and his sons and said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. So he said, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. Go ahead. Verse 2. And the fear of you and the dread of you shall be upon every beast of the earth uh -huh. and upon every fowl of the air, upon all that move upon the earth uh -huh. and upon all the fishes of the sea. Into your hands are they delivered. Into your hands are they delivered. So where you at? Is that it? That was the end of verse 2. Okay. Verse 3. Go ahead. Verse two, uh, 3. Every moving thing that liveth shall be meat for you. Every living thing that liveth, everything, every living thing that moveth shall be meat for you. Come on. Even as the green herb. Even as the green herb. Have, at, uh, I, uh, have I given you. All things. So even as the green herb, just like he said, he said any living thing, any any of the fowls of the earth and the beasts of the earth, they are meat to you, right? And he says, so he said every moving thing that liveth shall be meat for you, even as the green herb have I given you all things. So the herb was meat. So we was never uh, the intent of the use of it right now. What people are using it for is never meant been meant for that use. The smoke. The smoke. So people brought that to their own conclusion, mm -hmm. right? It was it was not what God said. Right. So now watch this. Hey, give me uh give me uh Genesis one and twenty nine. Book of Genesis, chapter 1, verse 29. Watch this. And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed. Every herb bearing seed. Which is upon the face of all the earth. Uh -huh. And every tree. In which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed. Uh -huh. To you it shall be for me. So every, every tree, every fruit, every uh, herb was for meat. That's what God said. It's not my words, it's God's words. Give me Leviticus chapter 17 and verse 10, please. 
Leviticus chapter 17, verse 10. Let's see what this says. <coughs> the book of Leviticus chapter 17, verse 10. And whatsoever man there be of the house of Israel, uh -huh. or of the strangers that sojourn among you, Three. that eateth any manner of blood. So when, when God issued the meat, he also issued the law that you cannot eat blood. Read. I will even set my face against that soul that eateth blood. And he said, I even would set my face against that soul that eateth blood. Come on, blood, come on. And will cut him off from among his people. And will what? And will cut him off from among his people. And will cut him off from among his people. Come on. For the life of the flesh is in the blood. The life of the flesh is in the blood. And I have given it to you upon the altars to make an atonement for your soul. Uh -huh. For it is the blood that maketh an atonement for the soul. So it's the blood. So now watch this. Go back to Genesis chapter uh, 9 and read verse 4. Watch this. Genesis chapter 9, verse 4. Genesis 9 and verse 4. Uh-huh. But flesh, but flesh, with the life thereof, Three. which is the blood thereof, Three. shall ye not eat. So, so that, that law came out in the beginning. It just, we got imp uh, uh, implemented meat. He also told you that you could not eat what? Blood. Blood. So that's letting you know that the meat could not be rare, rare. or medium rare. It had to be all the way what? All the way done. That's why when God always said a sweet savior, he was saying, when he was talking about the sweet savior, how was the, how was the burnt, it, it, that's why God called them burnt offerings. Mm -hmm. He didn't say medium rare offerings. Hey, give me some medium rare offerings. That's right. He said burnt mm -hmm. offerings. So our people be like, you know, where do we get these things from? <laughs> That's right. So now, from our officer George, give me uh, Ecclesiasticus chapter thirty-one, and we want to start with verse sixteen. Book of Ecclesiasticus chapter thirty-one, verse sixteen. Watch this. Eat as it becometh the man. Eat as it becometh the man. Those things which are set before thee. Read. And devour not, lest thou be hated. And don't just sit up there and when you when somebody sit food before you, rah, 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 you the cookie monster. You will eat everything, your hands and everything. You uh you get you want to use that. Alright, go ahead, read. It says, Leave off first for manner. Okay. Leave off first for manner, say. And be not unsatiable, lest thou offend. Come on. When thou sittest among many, reach not thy hand out first. Don't be the first one to reach out. Don't be fat. That's what they say. Don't be fat. Don't reach out first. Read. Verse 19. A very little is sufficient for a man well nourished. So you don't need a whole lot. You don't need to eat until your belly is all the way extra tight. You just need enough to fill you up to make sure you make it. Watch this. And he fetcheth not his wind. Short upon his baby. Because when you when you sit up there, you you sit you sit down, you're like <laughs> Damn bro, you just when you went from the bathroom to the bed, you <laughs> That's because you eat too much. Watch this read. Verse twenty. Sound sleep cometh of moderate eating. So when you get sound sleep, it comes from you eating in moderation, read. He rises early. He rises early. And his wits are with him. You you got you got your head, your head is right. So when you eat right, your head is right. That's right. Come on. It says, but the pain of watching and color and pains of the belly Three. are with an unsatiable man. It's with an unsatiable man, Bree. Verse 21. And if thou hast been forced to eat. If you've been forced to eat. Arise, go forth, vomit, and then thou shalt have rest. You see that? Because if you eat too much, that your stomach over full, where you feel like you gotta throw up, yeah. you you would did too much. Yeah, lean back and unbuckle. Yeah, you <laughs> <up. laughs> breathing heavy, heavy and everything. Watch this. I, I used to eat like that. You're right. <laughs> Read all praises. Twenty two. My son, hear me and despise me not. You see, you said, my son, hear me and despise me not. Read. And at the la as the last thou shalt find as I told thee. Come on. In all thy works be quick. So shall there be uh, so shall there no sickness 
come upon so, unto thee. So no, if we eat pop properly, we won't get what? Sick. See that? We must eat properly. Watch this. Come on. Verse 23. Whoso is liberal of his meat, uh -huh. men shall speak well of it. Uh -huh. And the report of his good housekeeping will be believed. It will, it will be what? Will be believed. So if you eat right, people will speak well of you. Now, in meaning, because you know, we we not trying to be funny or nothing. You know how people be when people's overweight. You be like, look at that dude's belly. Uh, you know, look at her belly. She got two stomachs. You know what I mean? I mean, those are the things that people say. Nobody want to hear those jokes. Those are cool. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. But we. So the way to to the way not to be talked about like that is make sure that we eat proper, mm -hmm. small portions, small meals. Like you can eat, you can eat up to five small meals in a day. That's right. If you eat five, five small meals, you good. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and then you can have two snacks in between. All right. You don't have to. You, you when we eat until we burp and breakfast, burp. Then we go right back at lunch, burp. Then we go to dinner, burp. burp. The burp, y'all know what that, that was. That was that second. That was that second. <laughs> and when you do that, man, you hurt yourself. You can turn that more this way if you want to. Man. Just turn it so it won't be out on there. All right. So from our uh, Officer George here we are. Give me the definition of meat. We had Merriam and Westford Dictionary. The definition of meat, I'm on number 2A. 2A, right there. 2A. Flesh. What is meat? Meat is flesh. Flesh. Also, flesh of a, a mammal. Flesh of a mammal, mammal as opposed to fowl or fish. You see, you see that? Flesh of, of a mammal. As opposed, what does it oppose me? Opposite of foul and fish. So now watch it. So we understand that. Do the Bible tell us that? Yes. Yeah. Give me First Corinthians chapter fifteen, verse thirty. I think it's six. First Corinthians chapter fifteen, verse thirty-six. I want, I want 39. Book okay. so 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 39. Uh -huh. All flesh is not the same flesh. What did it say? All flesh is not the same flesh. All flesh is not the same flesh. But there is one kind of flesh. There is one kind of flesh of men. Of men. Another flesh of beasts. So the beast's flesh is different? Another flesh of Another of fish. Another fish. The fish flesh is different. And another bird. And another of birds is different. So we well, so Mary over this way, dictionary hit it right on point. Yeah. Let's read that one more time. <clears throat> it states here is that flesh, the flesh of a mammal. A mammal. As opposed to fowl or fish. So they, they different, right? So now watch this from Mary. Give me Deuteronomy chapter 14, verse 7. Deuteronomy chapter 14, verse 7. Watch this. So now we're going to go into the dietary. Watch this. Book of Deuteronomy chapter 14 and verse 7. Come on. Nevertheless, these ye shall not eat of them that chew the cud, mm -hmm. or of them that divideth the clo uh, the cloven hoof. Read. As the camel. As the camel. And the hare. And the herd. And the coney. The coney is a, a, a large rabbit. For they chew the cud. For they chew the cud. But divided not the hood. What did God say? Therefore, they are unclean to you. See, they, they don't change. They did not change. Watch this. Come on. Read. Verse 8. And the swine. And the swine. Because it divided the hood. Mm -hmm. Yet cheweth not the cud. Hold on, hold on. 14 and 4. I started the wrong way. Okay. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, Deuteronomy chapter 14 and verse 4. Yeah, I'm sorry. Read. These are the beasts which ye shall eat. These are the beasts which you shall eat. That's what I want. Read. The ox. The ox. The sheep. The sheep. And the goat. And the goat. What did it say? The ox. The sheep. And the goat. Watch this. Read. The heart. The heart. And the robot. Robot. And the fallow deer. Read. And the wild goat. Read. And the pie guard. Read. And the wild ox. And the wild ox. And the chamber. Chambers. Read, uh, give me, this is what I want now. 
Ooh. Did I? Okay. I'm sorry. I got to write this in. Give me one second. All right. Read that one more time while we're doing it. I was yours. You got it now. <laughs> These are the beasts you shall eat. These are the beasts that you shall eat. The ox, mm -hmm. the sheep, and the goat. Mm -hmm. The harp and the roebuck and the fallow deer and the wild goat and the pygar and the wild ox and the chamos. Uh, hold on real quick. Give me, um, I want you to read this definition right here. All right, Officer George, here we go. Uh, don't you do that to me. All right, here we go. Botanical. Says Ox. God, where are you reading from? Okay, this is from Britannica. So it's the definition in Britannica. Come on. The Ox is a mammal, or it's called Bos Taurus. Bos Taurus, come on. This is a domesticated form of the large horned mammal. So, uh, so is it the, the domesticated form of a large horned mammal, Reed? That once moved in herds across North America and Europe. Reed. Whence they have disappeared. Come on. In Asia and Africa, where some still exist in the wild state. Reed. South America South and, and Australia mm -hmm. have no wild oxen. Oxen are members of the Bovine, a, bo, a bovidae family. The what? A, the bovidae family. Come on. The castrated male of the castrated male of B, Taurus, is a docile form, especially useful as a draft animal in many uh, many less developed parts of the world. Oxen are also used for food in some areas. Okay, so hold on real quick. Let me find where I'm going at. Let me find where I'm going at because I need to hit something. Let me see where I need to hit. It's like a PDF. I did that. Okay. Give me one second. Bad patience with me for one second, guys. I got you. I'm coming. Okay, let me see how to type this in. So that's what I get. <laughs> Hold on real quick. I got you, Dale. All right, we on point. Here we go. All right, start reading right there, officer. Boss Taurus, Taurus, now. Learn about the topic in these articles. Is that the beginning there? Yep. Yes, sir. I'm sorry. Okay. Can you re re bring it closer? And uh, it says cattle without humps. Uh, what, what, so it's a, it's a cattle without humps. Watch this. B. Taurus, Taurus, from Western Eurasia. Although the, uh, the two forms readily interbred, three. genetic studies suggest that both forms descend from the Arcus. But they are the product of independent and domesticated 
domestication events. Oh no! So what? What is it? What is it right there? You see in that picture? That's like um, cows we know today. That's the cows we know today. So, uh, so the ox without the hump, the co ox and the cow is the same what? Same thing. Same thing. Hold on, real quick. I'm ready. Let me get. The, uh, let me go back because what I got to do is. I'm busting into the. Let me type it in again. I'm sorry. Give me one second. Okay. Give me one second, guys. I'm coming. I got to do it all over again. But that's what I was looking for in the first place. All right, so we got that. Let me go down. Down, scroll down, scroll down. Scroll down. All right, Officer George. Um, start right there. Bovid, family bovidae. Any hoofed mammal in the family bovidae order jumps or a dactyli, which includes the antelope, sheep, goat, cattle, buffalo, and bison. So all of them are connected together. I'm sorry, guys. It took me a minute to get to it. But read that part, just that part again, which is what? It says, which includes the antelope, the antelope sheep, sheep goats, goats, cattle, cattle buffalo, buffalo, and bison. They all read what, what the next part says. And it would sense the bovidae apart from other cud chewing, Artodactyli, notably deer family, uh, cervidae, is the presence of horns Reef. consisting of a sheath covering a bony core that grows from the skull frontal bone. So the reason why I went there is because when you look at the, uh, the ones, now let's go to back Deuteronomy 14 and 4 and read that again. Watch this. In the book of Deuteronomy chapter 14 and 4. Watch this. Says these are the beasts which ye shall eat. Read the ox, the, ox, the sheep, the sheep, and the goat, and the goat. Read the hard, the hard, and the roebuck. Read and the fallow deer. Read and the wild goat, and the wild goat, and the pygar. Read and the wild ox. Come on, and the chamo. So now, we, didn't we just did we just read that right, John? So all those animals are clean, and all those animals we can what eat. All right. So even though that. Uh, antelope ain't even in there, but that we go out by it being part of that family. That kind. That kind. We can what? Yeah. We can eat it. Okay, everybody got that. Lord have mercy. It was long. So, so we know that the ox and the uh the ox and the cow is in the same way. Same so we can eat 
cows. Go back and build it up on this class. Mm -hmm. I for Burr. Back to uh, Deuteronomy chapter 14, verse 6, Officer George. So Deuteronomy chapter 14, verse 6. And every beast that parted the hoof. Every beast that, beast, beast that parted the hoof. And cleaveth the cleft into two claws. Three. And cheweth the cud among the beasts. Three. That that ye shall eat. That we can eat, guys. So do that, do, do that law disappear now? No. No, that law do not disappear. Did that law disappear when Christ walked the earth? No, mm -hmm. that law did not disappear. Go to Deuteronomy chapter 14 and start with verse 11, please. Go to Deuteronomy chapter 14, verse 11. There is this great giving even more interesting. Watch this. Of all clean birds. Of all clean birds. Ye shall eat. Ye shall eat. But these are they of which ye shall not eat. Three. The eagle. The eagle. The ossifrage. Uh-huh. The osprey. Three. In the... Glee, 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 and the kite, the vulture after his kind. The vulture after his kind. Anybody's in that cousin uh, of the vultures, you cannot eat. Watch this. And every raven after his kind. Come on. And the owl, and the night hawk, and the cuckoo, the cuckoo. Uh, the cuckoo. Come on. And the hawk. And the hawk. After his kind. Read. The little owl, the little owl, and the great owl, the big owl, and the swan. The swan. No, hold on. Now let's deal with that. The swan. What? What? What's in the swan family? Somebody help me. Ducks. Ducks. So can we eat ducks? No, we cannot eat ducks. Geese and gooses. Geese and gooses. We can't eat them, right? Right. Come on, read. It says, and the pelican, and the pelican, and the uh, gear eagle, and the cormorant, and the stork, and the heron. After her kind. Uh -huh. And the lap wing. And the what? And, and the lap wing. And the lap wing. And the bat. And the bat. And every creeping thing that flieth is unclean unto you. Everything that what? Every, and, every, and every creeping thing that flieth is unclean to you. Every creeping thing. The creeping thing is like a fly. A, a, a fly. Those little bugs that's out here flying right now, the uh, Hoover uh, Hoover flies, mm -hmm. uh, uh, the uh, the bees, the honey bee, the sweat bee, the uh, termite, flying, uh, flying insects. Yeah, flying yeah, insects. Yeah. I'll praise you. I'll, flying insects. Period. They, the brothers, right? I ain't gonna <laughs> look like I ain't that, but he's right. The flying insects. Period. We cannot what? Can't eat. You can't eat them. Thank you, bro. So now let's go for Mer. Give me Genesis chapter 1, verse 20. Book of Genesis chapter 1, verse 20. Uh-huh. And God said, well, let the waters bring forth abundantly. Go ahead. Abundantly, the moving creatures the, that have life. The be, uh, moving creatures that have life. Watch this. And foul. And the the that, fowls that may fly above the earth. Come on, in the open firmament, in the open heaven. And so, so fly, the birds fly in the open firmament of the heaven. So now, watch this. Uh, oh, sh -sh -sh. Make sure where I'm going at. Give me Exodus chapter sixteen, verse twenty. I mean sixteen, verse two. Exodus chapter 16, verse 2. Book of Exodus chapter 16, and verse 2. Yeah. And the whole congregation of the children of Israel murmured against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. Three. And the children of Israel said unto them, Would God we had died by the hand of the Lord in the, in the land of Egypt, when he had sat by the flesh pot, and when he did eat bread, to the fool, mm -hmm. for ye have brought us forth into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Right. Then said the Lord unto Moses, Behold, I will rain down bread from heaven. I will bring you. down red, but bread from heaven for you. Read. And the people shall go out and gather a certain rate every day, that I may prove them. That I may prove them. Whether they will walk in my law or not. Go ahead, read. And it shall come to pass. Then on the sixth day, they shall prepare that which they bring in, and it shall be twice as much as they gather daily. Agreed. And Moses and Aaron said 
into all the children of Israel. And, and even then ye shall know that the Lord has brought you out of the land of Egypt. Agreed. And in the morning, then ye shall see the glory of the Lord. Uh -huh. For that he hears your murmuring Agreed. against the Lord. Uh -huh. And what are we that ye murmur against us? Come on. And Moses said, This shall be, the Lord shall give you in the evening flesh to eat. Flesh to and eat. in the morning bread mm -hmm. to the full. For that the Lord hears your murmurs, murmurings, which ye murmur against him. Uh huh. And what are ye? What are we? Your murmurings are not against us, but against the Lord. Great. And Moses spake unto Aaron, saying unto all the congregation of the children of Israel, Come near before the Lord, for he hath heard your murmurings. And it, and it came to pass, as Aaron spake unto the whole congregation of the children of Israel, that they looked towards the wilderness, and behold, the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. Great. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, I have heard the murmurings of the children of Israel, speak unto them, saying, And even then ye shall eat flesh, and in the morning ye shall be filled with bread. Great. And ye shall know that I am the Lord your God. Great. Here and, it goes. And it came to pass that at even the quails came up. At even in the what came up? And at even the quails came so up. So y'all remember God said he was going to give them flesh, right? Mm -hmm. So God gave them quails, right? So now this is the part that I want to get to because when what, what's going to happen here is we're going, it's been a lot of debates on Facebook. A lot of debates on Facebook and YouTube about what's clean, what's not clean. Birds are unclean. Birds, mm -hmm. brothers, sisters, let me tell you something. The work that brothers do in this Bible is from God, not from men. I, I, me as a man, if I give you something out of my mind, out of my mind, right? Not out of God's Bible, out of my mind, right? I am unclean. I can't give you nothing clean. Mm -hmm. Me or myself can't give you nothing clean, right? But self, when now if I give you something out of God's word, that's what's what. That's mm -hmm. what's clean. Everybody understand that. So, read that, read that last part again where I read this, where I do this. And it came to pass that at even, the quails came up and covered the camp. And in the morning, the dew lay around about the host. That's all I want is 13. Okay. All right. So, now, guys, so let me show y'all something. All right, read that for me, Officer George. It says the common quail. The what? Speaks of the common quail. Okay, so let's see what do quails eat, okay? Hold on real quick. Let me get down. Yes, sir. So the common. I, 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 I wait till I get oh, there. Wait, wait, I'm coming. Up. Yep, I'm waiting. I'm coming. I'm coming. Officer George is a rush. I want to be the hurry up because he's going to turn me up over here. I uh, let me. There it goes. That's what I want. Common quail. Go ahead. Common quail mainly have not read uh diet. So okay. they know what he. This is uh, considering diet and nutrition. The common quail mainly have a herbivorous or granivorous diet. So they have a, they're, they're, that herbivorous means plants, I guess, mm -hmm. and grain, is grain seeds. Yes. Okay. Common quail mainly have a herbivorous or a granivorous feeding, a uh, diet feeding on various seeds, Very grains, seed, grain, and weeds. Weeds. Go ahead. However, they will also eat small insects such as beetles. Beetles. Bugs, Bugs and ants, worms, worms, and grasshoppers. Everybody see that? All right. So, what can we eat in those things right there? Don't we eat beetles? Beetle. Yeah, except for the worms. All, all except for the worm is clean to us, right? Okay. But what we got to remember is what do the clean foods do with a waste? Let's see what Christ says. Let's go to Matthews. I'm adding this here right now. Let's go to Matthews. I did not write this down. Give me a uh, 15, Officer George. 
Matthew's 15, and I think I want 15. Let me make sure. Else. Yes, I want 15. <laughs> Matthew's 15, and I want uh, 15 and 11. Uh, the book of Matthew, chapter 15, verse 11. Oh, no, no, no. I'll take it back. I don't want 15 and 11. Stop. Real quick. Uh, I want up here. It says... I wonder where's the where he's talking about don't he go at the draft. Is that uh going out is the uh, 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 the drought. No, uh, 17. 17, yeah. It says, Do not ye yet understand that whatsoever enters in at the mouth goeth into the belly. Go into the belly. And is cast out into the drop. Oh, uh, you see that right right there? So when those when those when those uh quails do eat worms, they they use the restroom and they go out of them, right? I we eating are we eating their their bowel with their uh, what's it called? Uh where you use the bathroom. I mean your intestines. Your, your intestines. Are we eating their intestines? No, all that is supposed to be cleaned out of them when we eat them, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I just want to do everybody to understand that right. we're not eating the intestines and we're not eating the stuff that's inside the intestines, right? right? All that get cleaned out of every animal that we eat, mm -hmm. right? All right. So now, where was that? Read that dietary part one more time. It says the common quail mainly have a herbivorous or grain or granivorous diet. Feeding on various seeds and grains and weeds. However, they will also eat small insects such as beetles, bugs, ants, worms, and grasshoppers. So they, that's their common dietary, right? That's their common dietary. Okay, so now, where, what else did I want to go back to? All right, let's go back to. Give me one second, guys. I'm coming. All right, so now we're going to go to the family of the quail. All right. All right. Here we go. The family of the quail. Now watch this, guys. Go ahead, Officer George. The family of the quail. You could drop that. I ain't going back. You told me to remember how to pronounce it, bro. Uh, Phaser uh, Anadi. Phaser Anadi. Phaser Anadi. Yeah. Phaser Anadi. Yeah. The Phaser Anadi. <laughs> <All right. laughs> Come on the with phaser it. Phaser <laughs> Anadi. Right. Are a family of heavy ground living birds. Ground living birds. So y'all got to remember ground living birds. Come on. Which include pheasants, mm -hmm. partridges, partridges, jungle fowl, right. chicken, chickens, turkeys, turkeys. Old world quail. The old world quail, quails. Pea fowls. Pea fowls. Read. The family includes many of the most popular game birds. Game birds. All them we can what? Read. Wow. Read. The family is a large one. This is what I want. And includes 185 species divided into 54 genera. Oh, so it's 185 different species. That's a lot of food. Now, now... For you internet brothers that sitting around here arguing this chicken is clean, it did not, did we not just read in Exodus, God gave us what? Quails. He gave us quails. Mm -hmm. Then the quail, and you can eat the quail after it's what? It's kind. After his kind. What did we just read? Read that again. What is this kind? It's start, it's start right there. It says the, uh, which includes the pheasants, the partridge, uh, jungle fowl, chickens, turkey. Turkeys, because brothers say you can't eat turkey. Chicken, you can't eat chicken, you can't eat turkeys. <laughs> Old world quail. Old world quail. Peafowl. Peafowl. So that's all we know. That's all we need right there. So right there, 
Hold up, brothers. Somebody's lying. Mm -hmm. Either God is lying yeah. or y'all lying. Because I've had brothers, I've talked to somebody about this thing one time. They talking about, but chickens be picking around and all kind of stuff in the barnyard. I said, man, don't you think that chicken got sense enough to know what he's eating or not? <laughs> Just because he's picking around something don't mean he's eating it. Hey, hey, let me tell you something. You know what's funny about folks? Folks uh, eat, they'll eat uh, uh, eel, raw eel, ja Japanese people. Yeah. Our people go try that yeah. stuff at some time. Yeah. They, they eat Jap they'll eat raw eel, they'll eat shrimp, lobsters, crabs, yeah. they'll eat all that garbage, but they talk about a chicken eating a worm. Yeah. Well they'll say chicken eat its own poop. Yeah, eat its own poop. Yeah, yeah, right. that's what they say. Right. They uh, they eat their own poop. Yeah. Bruh, let me tell you something. That's why they got a gizzard. The gizzard clean it. <laughs> no, I don't know. <laughs> it still gotta go out of the way. It still gotta go out the drop. Ah. Uh, yeah, so <laughs> now hold on, y'all. If if I'm not mistaken, now if anyone is starving, didn't we eat our own kids? We just did a class on this. Yeah. Didn't we eat did. our own kids when we starving? Yeah. So if a chicken is starving, you don't think you'll eat his poop? Right. Nigga, you. I mean, I'm sorry. <laughs> you starving? Uh, yeah. We don't know that the chicken's condition. Do we we? Don't, man, he, yeah. he, he's messed. <laughs> hey, you know anything he messed up? You remember when we went to the? Uh, y'all remember when we went to the? Uh, the petting zoo up there in, um, when we went to the Oh, uh, yeah, when we went to Noah's Ark. Noah's Ark. We went up there and we went to the petting zoo, right? So did. What was eating this duty? The zebra? Uh, yeah. Yeah, it was, it was the zebra. You remember the zebra, Lord? We was like, eee, you nasty. <laughs> That's why we don't eat zebras. <laughs> hey, bro, we see this with our old eyes, man. So, real talk. When it, and it was almost feeding time, what? Yeah. And, yeah. and the man was coming to feed him, but he, hey, he must have been slow. Yeah. Bro, I said, I got to eat this dude. Yeah. Yeah. It, was <laughs> it was some minute he won't say this to the second time, man. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was over like this. Yeah. I can't believe you eat your. No. Yeah. Now, now, see, if you don't hang around animals a lot, we wouldn't know. We wouldn't know. We that. wouldn't know what they do. Mm -hmm. But, hey, we don't know what. But that don't just say they go, don't eat their own duty. They're clean, sheep. Mm -hmm. They 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 eat their duty too, bro. They get hungry. Every animal will. You know, it's, it's just I'm telling you, when it comes down to starvation, yeah, I gotta yeah. survive. Just, they got the Rocky song going. I will survive. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let me get back to the lesson that our praise of the Most High. Give me Leviticus chapter. <laughs> give me Leviticus chapter eleven, verse nine. Book of Leviticus. Chapter 11, verse 9. Yes, sir. These shall ye eat of all that are in the water. These shall you eat all that is in the water. Now we're going to the now we're going to the uh the fish, guys. These shall you eat all in the waters. It says, These shall ye eat of all that are in the waters, whatsoever hath fins and scales Read. in the waters, in the seas, in the rivers. Them shall ye eat. So whatever the uh, skins and fins, uh, scales and fins in the waters, the rivers, and the seas, these shall you eat. Give me Exodus chapter seven, verse nineteen. All right, because I'm, I'm gonna make two points right here when he get that get that scripture, Exodus seven and nineteen, and read that for me. The book of Exodus chapter seven and verse nineteen. Read. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying. Say unto Aaron, say unto Aaron, take thy rod and stretch out thine hand upon the waters of Egypt. Stretch your hands out upon the waters of Egypt. Talk about the rivers and the ponds and everything surrounding Egypt. Read. Upon their streams. Upon their streams. Upon their rivers. Upon their rivers. Upon their ponds. Upon their ponds. And upon all their pools of water. Read. That they may become blood. That they may become what? That they may become blood. Read. And that there may be blood throughout all the land of Egypt. I just want 19. Is that it? I, I'll go ahead. Uh, both in vessels of wood and in vessels of stone. Okay, everybody got that. So let me give you let me give you some heads up if you didn't know. When, the, let's go back to the Deuteronomy, I mean the Leviticus law real quick, and let's read that and I'm going to give you, go back and I'm going to explain what I, why we went to 
Exodus 7. Come on. The book of Leviticus chapter 11 verse 9. Three. These shall ye eat of all that are in the waters. All that's in the waters. Because right there, stop. All that's in the waters. The water, because uh, the Esau uh, say, they changed the word ocean, I mean sea, to what? Ocean. ocean. Who told them to do that? You don't see ocean in the Bible nowhere. Mm -hmm. So Esau say, see, you can eat the shrimp and the catfish out of the ocean, because see, God says sea, but who gave them permission to change it? Yeah. See, don't be fooled by that. Don't be fooled. God says salt. He says, speak to the children of Israel with his words, not man's words. Right. So when, when what you gotta realize is when we when, when people are going fishing, no words are mentioned right here in pines. So they said, God didn't say pines, I can eat catfish. That's why we went to right. Exodus 7 and 19. <coughs> they show you that God was talking about the pines too. The pines got bluegill. The pine got bluegill, the lakes. That's why we went to that to show that. Everybody got that. I read it again, come on. Uh, Leviticus. No, no, yeah, Leviticus. The book of Leviticus, chapter 11, and verse 9. These shall ye eat of all that are in the water. All in the waters. Whatsoever has fins and scales Greek. in the waters. In the sea. The waters. He's talking about the ponds, the lakes, the, uh, the uh, streams, reef. In the sea. In the seas. And in the rivers. And the rivers. Them shall ye eat. Them shall ye eat. So, so don't go by what Esau say. Come on, read. Verse 10. And all that have not fins. All that have not fins. And scale. Read. In the sea. In the seas. And in the rivers. In the rivers. And of all that move in the waters. In the waters, the ponds, the streams, the lakes. Read. In any living thing that is in the water. Anything that's in the water. They shall be an abomination unto you. That's your shrimp, your crabs, your lobsters, your bluegills. I mean, I mean your eels. I say bluegill. Your sharks. All those uh, delicacies that the United States sells up to you. Go ahead. In Louisiana, the, 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 the crawfish. All praises. All praises. All praises. All praises. You're on point. You're on point, sir. Both of y'all on point. Read, come on, verse 11. Verse 11. They shall be even an abomination unto you. Uh -huh. You shall not eat the, their flesh. You shall not eat their flesh. But ye shall have the, but ye shall have their carcasses in abomination. Read. Whatsoever have no fin, no fin, nor scale, nor scale in the waters, that shall be in an abomination unto you. When the God says touch, like he told you it's in the, with the swine, don't touch it, what is he talking about? Don't eat it. That's what he's still talking about. He's not talking about don't touch it, you are right. clean. He's talking about eat it because you got to realize, watch what John the Revelator here. I mean, not John the Revelator, John the Baptist. Let's see what he had on real quick so we can just clear that up real quick. Uh, Give me Matthew chapter 3, and I think I want verse 2. Matthew chapter 3, I think I want verse 2. Let me get there first and make sure it's what I want. John chapter 3. No, four. Yeah. This is the book of Matthew, chapter three, verse four. And the same John. The same John. Had raiment. Had raiment. Of camel's hair. So you see that? He had raiment of camel's hair. Can we eat camel? So he, but he had camel's hair clothing on, right? Yeah. So I just wanted to make that point. Yeah. All right. So, so that's when God says don't touch it. He's talking about don't eat it. He's not talking about don't. Touch. Put your hand on Don't it. put your hands on Don't, it. Put, Don't put your hand on it to eat it. Don't put your hand on it to eat it. All praises, Officer George. Let's go back to Leviticus and read verse 12 again. 11 and 12. Uh, Leviticus chapter 11, verse 12. Whatsoever hath no fins nor scales in the water, uh -huh. that shall be an abomination unto you. That should be an abomination unto you. So give me uh, from her. Give me Genesis chapter 2 and I want 10 through 14. Book of Genesis, chapter 2, verse 10. And a river went out of Eden to water the garden, and from thence it was parted and became into four heads. The name of the first is the Python. The Python, go that, ahead. That is that which compasses the whole land of Havilah, where there is gold. And the gold that the land is good. And the gold of that land is good. There is bdellium. 
and Alakstone. And the names of the second river is the Gihon. Uh, the second name of the second river is what? The Gihon. Read. The same is it that compasses the whole land of Ethiopia. You read. And the name of the third river is Hadeko. Uh huh. That is it which goes towards the east of Assyria. Uh huh. And the fourth river is the Euphrates. Uh huh. That's 14, verse 14. Okay. That's what I want. Is that it? That's it. I right, and, and the, read that again. And the fourth river is what? And the fourth river is Euphrates. The fourth river is Euphrates. So you see that the reason why I went there is show you that these rivers, you get uh these rivers is going through these these lands, right? You cannot eat what out of them. Anything that does not have fins and scale. Yeah, anything that cannot have fins and scale. Because a brother, uh, uh, the reason why I went to that because these rivers was going all over. It was in Africa. It That's was right. in our land. It was in uh, in the uh, uh, it was in our land. It was under our land in the uh, Middle East. Thank you, bro. What they call the Middle East. Uh, give me one second. Give me one second, homie. Real quick, I was just give me one second. All right, give me uh, Ecclesiastes 24 and 26. So that and that and that first river, because you know it didn't name the first one, right? So that this one is the first river right there. The book of Ecclesiastes or Sarah, chapter 24, verse 26. He maketh the understanding to the Abound like Euphrates. Like Euphrates. And as Jordan in the time of the harvest. And Jordan in the time of harvest. That first river was the Jordan. So, okay. So, I'm just giving y'all the understanding of what that first river was in Genesis 2. So, we cannot go out and just uh, fish forever, whatever we want. Right. You know, catfish. Who who told us to fish for, fish for catfish? Who? Esau. All praise. Uh, Esau told us to fish for catfish. Mm -hmm. But our people won't let that thing go because they said it's okay for us to do that. So we we'll stick to that one hundred and ten. What? And then started eating gator. Yes, <laughs> but hold on real quick. I want to keep my mind on that real quick because hold on. Christ said it in Book of John. Give me Book of John chapter five. Let's see what Christ said about that. Hold on. I'm add on to this. So I'm sorry, guys. I got to look for stuff. My head ain't up. It ain't up. I know. I'm gonna get you one. Let me get you. Uh, don't read name. Where are you at? Subscription. I'm looking for. Give me out, officer. I'm looking for if a man. If a man come in his own name. Uh, 43. Read that for me. This is the book of John chapter 5, verse 43. I'm sorry, read. I am come in my father's I come name. in God's laws. And you receive me not. Brothers don't receive you when you come in God's laws. Watch this, read. If another shall come in his own name, that's Esau. Esau came in his name and said, "Hey man, you can you can eat catfish." Read him, you will receive. So he didn't receive God's laws, but you receive Esau telling you that you can't can't eat catfish. But it's written in the Bible. God said you can't eat catfish, but you will know that. But Esau, you you loyal to what he told you yeah. you can do. Yeah. So it, it make it makes sense to you yeah. that it's what it's what we do as folks. It's, Seven traditions. There you go. Mm -hmm. Cracker down, eating gators and uh, frogs and uh, catfish. Yes. Catfish, they still do all that. They're my son, right? Y'all praises the southern uh, uh, traditions. But yeah, you almost hear them. Should let them come on over. Yeah, they're my southern traditions that we'll learn from them hunting, mm -hmm. not from us honey, from them honey. All right? Uh, give me, from her, give me Matthew chapter 13, verse 47.
the book of Matthew, chapter 13, verse 47. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a net. Hold on real quick. Before we get there, hold on. Hold on, before we get there, guys, give me one second, guys. Give me one second. We'll read the book of uh, Leviticus, chapter 11. And then we'll go to verse 4. Nevertheless, these shall ye not eat of them that chew the cud, or of them that divided the hook. As the count, because he cheweth cud, but divideth not the hoof, he is unclean unto you. And the coney, because he cheweth the cud, but divideth not the hoof, he is unclean to you. And the hare, which is a rabbit, because he cheweth the cud, but divideth not the hoof. Most of you know, like you ever seen rabbits and, and camels and stuff, they chew cud, they got them padded feet, you know. That's what it's talking about. That hare, a rabbit, they got some little padded feet. They don't have a, 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 a hoof like a, a, a pig or a cow. <laughs> Yet he cheweth not the cud. He doesn't clean you. Or if their flesh shall ye not eat, and their carcass ye shall not touch. Well, that was one of the swine. I'm sorry, I skipped one. Verse 7. And the swine, though he divided the hoof, if you ever look down the pig feet, he divided the hoof. And be cloven footed, yet he cheweth not the cud. He is unclean to you. Of their flesh shall ye not touch us with. Uh, Elder was just speaking of, he's speaking of, of their flesh. He said, because most time when people go to touch something, they intend to eat it. <laughs> you, you know what I'm saying? So that's what he was actually talking about right there. Of their carcass shall ye not touch. And a lot of people, believe it or not, I heard, uh, I heard the Edomites, you know, making jokes of it. They talk about that road kill. Mm -hmm. Old country folks did that thing. They see something laying in the road. And if it didn't stink, they take it. Still fresh. And yeah, it's still fresh to them. <laughs> you know, I, I, used, I heard that. I actually heard that in my, in my born days. And they would go take, uh, like, Arm and Ham or baking soda and find a bucket. You put it in a bucket, throw some ice, and, and, and pour I'm going to have a baking soda because that's got salt in it. And salt will kill bacteria. So whatever bacteria is still living in there, they soak in there for a period of time. And then and, and folks would eat it. I've seen people do a chicken like that that may be a little smelly. It ain't, it's just getting ready to turn bad. But they put the blood will start stinking before the flesh rot. So what they do is they salt it, you know, in, in, in cold water and pour some arm and handle bacon soda in it. Let it soak for so many hours. They mess around and cook it through and eat it. Yeah. So big badge of people back in the day, uh, they didn't probably, they probably just used salt maybe if they knew anything about salt's properties of killing bacteria. They probably poured salt all on it and then went on and cooked it and, you know, made a meal of that thing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's go back to Matthew 13. The book of Matthew, chapter 13, and verse. What is it? Uh, 30, uh, 30, 30, 30. 30. Yeah. All right, I'm back, guys. Come on, read. I mean, uh, 48. Uh, 48, yeah. I no, 47. Stolen 47. Go ahead. <laughs> Again. Now the kingdom of heaven is light unto a net. It's the kingdom of heaven. Pay attention to this parable because we're just talking about fish that is good and what? Bad. Animals that's good and what? Bad. Because people say the dietary laws took it away, right? Yep. That when Christ came, uh, the dietary law was done away with. God, yes. They said God's laws are done away right. with. But watch what Christ says right here. Read. He says, again, the kingdom of heaven. Is like unto a net. A net, read. That was cast into the sea. It was cast into the sea. And gathered of every kind. Every kind. So when you cast the net in the sea, see, you gather every kind of what? Fish. Right. Watch this, read. Which 
When it was full, when it was full, they drew the shore. Come on, and sat down and gathered the good into vessels. Gathered the good into vessel, but cast the bad. Over so you away. cannot just eat any type of damn fish. Right. That's the, so the dietary law is right here in the new what? In, in, the, new in the New Testament, Christ is showing you the dietary law. Right here. Right there. Yeah. See, our people be, y'all, uh, 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 we, we, we ignorant, brothers and sisters. You cannot just eat anything you want to eat. Mm -hmm. Christ is showing you right here. From there, Officer, uh, Officer George, let's go to, uh, Go to uh, verse 10 and 11. I mean, 10 to 12. Uh, chapter, uh, Matthew. Matthew 10. Yeah, Matthews ver 10. Matthews 13, verse 10. Okay, the book of Matthew, chapter 13, and verse 10. Yeah. And the disciples came and said unto them, Why speakest thou unto them in peril? Read. And he answered and said unto them, because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. See, unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom. That's why we were just able to break that down, showing you that the what? That the fish, that the dietary laws was in the what? The New Testament. New Testament. Christ showed you that. Mm -hmm. But see, a Christian would have read over that. He would have over and, and what? Uh, oh, uh, well, you know, he's just, I don't know what he said right there, but. He was just saying. Yeah. We, <laughs> they wouldn't have seen it. We wouldn't have, they definitely wouldn't have seen it. So we're showing you right here that that is the dietary law in the New Testament. So it's not it's not meant for them, Bree. He says, uh, because it is it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. It's given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. But to them it is not given. Some of y'all brothers quit fighting so hard. Some of y'all sisters quit fighting so hard to bring your children, your kids, your uh, aunties, your sisters, your brothers, your mamas, your daddies, your babies. Quit fighting so hard. Because sometimes it's just not meant, man. Right. It's not meant, guys. It's not up to us who God wakes up. Right. It's up to him. You find yourself fighting with God, you ain't done mad at God. Why? You're going to die. Why would you ever be mad at God? You're going to die. Well, he, he didn't wake up my uh, uh, he didn't wake up my brother. Okay, but you won't, right? They don't care about their life. They want to join hand with somebody. They want somebody they know mm -hmm. to walk this walk. It's not like that. Mm -hmm. You got to get to know me. Mm -hmm. I got to be your big brother now. I gotta be your I gotta be your grandson now. I gotta be your son now. I gotta be your little brother now. I gotta be somebody's big sister. I got she gotta be somebody's little sister. She gotta be somebody's big sister. That's right. You gotta gather you gotta gather the brothers and sisters that you're around. That's who you gotta get cool with. You can't get cool with people in the world. How you gonna have more respect for your mama that's in the world than you got for your leader that's in the truth? Right. How you do that? How we do that? You, you, you don't see yourself fighting against God. So watch this. Read that again, verse 11. It says, he, he answered and said unto them, because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. Read. But to them, it is not given. It's not given to them. Read. Verse 12. For whosoever hath, to him shall be given. And whoever hath it, it shall be given. And he shall have more abundance. He's going to gain more. Read. But whosoever have not. Whoever have not. So have more, you're going to gain more understanding. But whoever's have not understanding. From him shall be taken away. Even read. that he has. Even that little understanding that he has. If you know John 3.16. If you know 1 John chapter 5 verse 3. If you know 1 John 2 and 3. Mm -hmm. If you know 1 John 3 and 4. Mm -hmm. If you know Leviticus 11. If you know Deuteronomy 14, if you know Numbers chapter 15, 38, yeah. if you don't complete these laws, it's going to be taken away from you. Some of y'all feel like God will never take, then you come back, now all of a sudden you don't know what sin is. You don't know what love is. You don't know what uh, love your neighbor, you love yourself is. Mm -hmm. Because God has took these things away from you. You can't let these things happen to us. Right. We got to, we got to what? We got to strive to go forward. 
because it's not giving it to them. So don't fall out his truth because somebody in the world is trying to pull you back to them. Yeah. Don't do that. Don't fall out his truth because of that. Hey, the world wants you. The world wants you so you can die with them. I'm calling you brothers and sisters so you can live in Christ. And hopefully we all make it to the kingdom. Right. Hopefully I make it. Hopefully you make it. Because I ain't saying I'm going to make it. I'm going to tell you right now. I don't know if I'm going to make it. I won't know until the Lord burned up this earth. Or until I wake up. If I wake up to ready to go into paradise in the, when I'm in the wilderness. If I wake up, I'm cool with that. But if I wake up and I'm on fire, I ain't cool with it, but I ain't got no choice. What am I going to say? Who am I going to debate with? Man. I only can debate with myself. Why am I debating with myself? Because you're the fool. You, I'm talking about myself. I'm talking about myself. You're the fool that was sinning when you had a chance not to sin. Yeah. Who's the fool? Yeah. Like Mr. T said, I've been in the fool. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go back. I you see what I mean? We can't even get through a good class. We just brought them back. Now, let's go back. All right, from Mercury be John chapter, oh no, Titus chapter 4. Famous Christian scripture, y'all. Scripture, y'all. First, I mean, I see. Titus? No, first Timothy. First, first Timothy. Timothy. Chapter 4, verse 1. The book of First Timothy, chapter 4, verse 1. Now the Spirit speaks expressly. That in the latter times. In the latter times is now, guys. This is the latter times. Watch. Some shall depart from the faith. Some of y'all going to depart from the faith. And we're going to break this all the way down today. Today, y'all getting a couple of nuggets. If y'all just coming in this class, y'all going to get some nuggets today. And we're going to show you some. Watch this. Read it again. It says, uh, 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly. No, it's not, it's not this class that it's going to be broken down. Yet. Hold on real quick. Let me see. The other class. I'm sorry, Officer George. I know mm -hmm. I'm interrupting your reading. Okay. Yeah, it's not this it's next week's class. Okay, go ahead, read. It says, "Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, read. giving heed to seducing spirits, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, and doctrines of devils. So the seducing spirits." It's going to be brothers and sisters who's not in the truth. And the doctrines of devils is that you can eat. God so loved the world. You can eat anything you want. God so loved the world. Uh, come by y'all, my Lord. All nations can get saved. Those are the doctrines of what? Devil. Those are the doctrines of the devil. Watch this. Read. Speaking lies. Speaking lies. In the hypocrisy. Hypocrisies. Come on. Having their consciences having seared. They, uh, having their mind seared. With a hot iron. With a hot iron. When you have your mind seared with a hot iron, that means you can't get out of things. You can't get doctrines out of your head. You can't get things out of your head that is wrong. Watch this. Read. Forbidding to marry. Forbidding to marry. That's your, that's your Catholicism. Mm -hmm. That's your uh, be a nun. No, be a nun. Save yourself for God. Priests don't marry. Priests don't marry. The women don't marry. That's Catholicism. Forbidding marriage. Watch this. Read. God says mm -hmm. marriage is honorable in all. How the hell is a priest supposed to be a priest? Which we know they ain't a priest. Yeah. They supposed to be priests. How the hell are you telling people don't marry? Right. We know what the law. Let's go to First Corinthians real quick because I just want to touch on this real quick. Touch on it. First Corinthians seven and start with verse twenty-eight. The book of First Corinthians, chapter seven, verse twenty-eight. But and. If thou marry, but if and but if thou marry, but and if thou marry, thou hast not seen. See, it's not a sin to marry. Read. And if a virgin marry, come on, she has not sin. Read. Nevertheless, nevertheless, such shall have trouble in the flesh. Now jump down to verse thirty-two. Verse thirty-two. But I would have you without carefulness. He that is unmarried. Careth for the things that belong to the Lord. Read how he may please the Lord. What he's saying right there, guys, is like when you when, when you unmarried, you focus strictly on God. That's all he's saying. Right. When you unmarry, you focus strictly on God. Watch this. But he that is married, and he that is married, careth for the things that are of the world. Meaning, because you got to support your wife. 
Right. Watch his reap. How he may please his wife. How he may please his wife. Come on. There is dif there is difference also between a wife and a virgin. Read. The unmarried woman cares for the things of the Lord. Read. That she may be holy both in body and in spirit. Well, no, what it means by that? That she may be both holy in body and in spirit. Check it out. I'm going to show you. An unmarried woman, she must maintain God's laws even without a husband. So she got to work. She got to work, she got to cook, she got to clean, she got to do, she got to keep herself in what? In order, herself. But read the next part. Uh, let's see. Don't be this. But she that is married. But she that is married. Caring for the things. The caring, caring for the things. Of the world. Of the world. How she may please her husband. Because that's what that's, that's what he's saying is uh, that woman got to make sure she got to be able to please her husband. So now she she ain't all the way all the time what right. study because she got to cook, she got to clean, she got to wash clothes, she got to she got to do all this. Mm -hmm. Her focus is on her husband. Mm -hmm. But if you got a good man of God, what is the man of God going to tell your wife to do? <laughs> they do it. right. He's going to tell your wife to make sure she study. Yes, hey baby, study. Yeah, make sure you help. My wife know. I'm going to ask. I might not say that for a couple of days. I'll come back. What you look, what you read? <laughs> what you, you, been, you been studying? She'll give me the rundown. You know, because these are the things I'm going to ask. Because why? Because we got to make sure she's serving God. Mm -hmm. got to make sure she's serving God. Even though I'm her Lord, she still got she to gotta get, she got to stay in this Bible to stay sharp. She got to stay in this Bible to stay rooted. Because if a woman ain't rooted and she ain't sharp, that's where the marriage problems start. Because she start looking for the things of the what? Of the world. Of the world. Talking to worldly people, dealing with worldly people. Now, mm -hmm. pow, now the marriage is blown up. All right, watch this. Keep on going. Verse 35. And this I speak for your own profit. Not that I may cast a snare upon you, but for that which is comely. That ye may attend upon the Lord. You may what? That ye may attend upon the Lord without distraction. Without what? Without distraction. See that? That's why he was saying that you don't you don't marry for with so you can contend with the Lord without what? Without distraction. Without distraction. That's all he was saying. So you can contend for you can uh. uh you, are, you can be with the Lord. You can uh, do what you need to do with the Lord without distraction. But if you got a good husband and you got a good wife, mm -hmm. the, the good wife ain't going to distract her husband from studying. A good husband ain't going to distract his wife from studying. Right. How are you going to be mad at your wife for putting her attention to God? That would be kind of stupid, right? Because that's the same the same attention she putting to God is what keeping her from cheating on your butt. That's right. Your black butt, she's that's keeping her from cheating on you. Yep. You gotta let your wife love God just like you love God. Mm -hmm. She's supposed to be following you. You want your wife just to always pick your toes, wash your back. You want her to do everything for you. Now you distracting her from getting what? Right. Safe. I wouldn't talk about you. I don't you don't watch my damn toes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, we ain't talking about I'm talking about women of the world. You know what I mean? Real talk. I ain't go. I I don't be strapped. So let's go back. Why did we get over there? I don't know. But after that, but right, you you disgusting. You know I do that sometimes. <laughs> let's go back to First Timothy chapter four. That's my book, was the right book. Book. Book First Timothy chapter four. Yeah, and uh, verse four. And verse four. That's where we at now. Go ahead. It says, "For every creature of God is a is good." And nothing to be refused. Every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused. But if it be received with thanksgiving. If it be received with thanksgiving. Come on. For it is sanctified by the word of God. But it is sanctified by the what? Word of God and prayer. And of uh, God and prayer. Read. If thou put the brother. Oh, no, I'm sorry. We didn't finish three. Go back to three and then okay. go to four one more time. Okay, my bad. That was me. Um, First Timothy three and three, forbidding to marry, forbidding to marry, and commanding to abstain from meat. Read. That's because Catholicism too. Catholicism, right? Come on. Which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving uh -huh. of them which believe and know the truth. They believe and know the what? 
and know the truth. Agreed. For every creature of God is good. Every creature of God. So if you believe and you know the truth and you know the laws, every creature of God is good. Watch this. And nothing to be refused. And not to be refused. If it be received with thanksgiving. Agreed. And for it is sanctified. For it's what? It is sanctified. For it's sanctified. By the word of God. By the word of God in prayer. So when God sanctified something, he had cleaned it, right? Yep. So then, then let's go back to earlier in the class where we were talking about cows. You can eat a what? You can eat a cow. Why do the doctors tell you red meat is bad for you? Because they eat it red meat. But they eat the raw with the blood in it. With the blood in it, of course it's like, of course you getting cancer. Of course you getting what else come with? What they say? High blood pressure. What they say? Some everything else. Pressure. And what is it? Uh, 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 you're talking about uh, uh, have diabetes, high blood pressure, gout. All that comes, yeah, right, yeah. Uh, yeah. All that comes from that when you're not eating the proper, we're not eating food the proper way. Wait, so cows cannot be unclean. Cows cannot be bad for you. Let's put that right. if you're eating it according to the dietary yeah. law. Yeah. God said everything when he when he told us he we, when the priest ate the food that they are uh, that they are uh, prepared uh, yeah, for the offering. Yeah, for the offering. Oh, yeah. They was burnt offerings, burnt right? Offering. So the priest was eating the food well what? Well done. Um, that should give you a kind of understanding, huh? Yeah. Mm. Yep. Can't give you an understanding. You remember when Christ, Christ, Christ oh, we great, we great come to that. Hold on, I ain't gonna even pray it out yet, but we great come to it. All right, let's go to verse six. Read. Verse 6. If thou put the brethren in remembrance of these things. Read. If you put the brothers now, listen, guys. He said. For every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused if it be received with thanksgiving, for it is sanctified by the word of God, meaning by the law, right? Mm -hmm. Watch in prayer. Watch his read. Watch his next part. If thou put the brethren in remembrance every, of what? Oh, stop. In remembrance of what? In the remembrance of what we read in verse 5. Not I mean verse 4. Every creature is good and nothing to be refused and receive the thanksgiving. For it is sanctified. So if you put the brothers in remembrance of to eat clean food, read. Thou should be a good minister. Hold on, you should be a what? Thou should be a good minister. Oh, so y'all Christian church, if you're no longer listening, your pastor is not a good minister. That's right. He's not a good minister. Read. Thou should be a good minister of Jesus Christ. Three. Nourished up in the word of faith. Now hold on. Nourished up in the what? In the words of faith. And so you're going to be nourished up. When you nourish, that means you took it care of. You fulfill, you fool. You what? You, 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 when, like when Esau nourished us, they took care of us, right? right. So if we, if we are, read that important again, if we good ministers of Jesus Christ, nourished up in the word of God, word nourished up in the word of faith, read. And a good doctrine. And good doctrine, which we know in Proverbs 4 and 2, God give us good doctrine. The word is at his law. No, it's uh, the mouth. No, no. Let's read that real quick. Oh, but, but I, you did. I, yeah, I'll, I'll butcher the hell out of that. Let's read that real quick. Proverbs 4 and 2. Proverbs 4 and 2. Uh, <laughs> I give you good doctrine. The law is at my mouth. I think it's that's what it is. We close. We close. I think that's what it is. I might. I might have told him. four, verse two. Uh huh. He says, uh, "For I give you good doctrine. Uh huh. Forsake ye not my law. Forsake ye not my law. Is that it? That's it. I give you good doctrine. Forsake ye not my law. Okay, I hit it all the way back. Is there? You but, that, uh, that when it talks about uh. Uh, pastor shouldn't keep the law. That, yeah, that's not, right. I hear it mixed up. You right. You dare go right. I hear it all mixed up in there. All right, let's go back. Let's go back. All right, I got you there. Let's go back. Nourished up in the word. Nourished up in the words of faith Read. of good doctrine. The law. Whereunto thou hast attained. So we attained these things. So we carefully followed these laws. So what is Christian talking about? Right here it said we carefully followed God's laws. Mm -hmm. We carefully attained it, meaning we carefully followed God's laws. So now let's go back. Let's uh, now let's go back. Let's go forward. Give me John chapter 17, verse 17. John chapter 17, verse 17. Watch what it says. 
the book of John, chapter 17 and verse 17. Come on. Sanctify them through thy truth. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Thy word is truth. If y'all didn't know what truth is, it's Psalms 119. Let's get it. It's Psalms 119, 142, please. The book of Psalms, chapter 119, verse 142. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and thy law is the truth. Let's go back to John 17, 17. John 17, 17. Sanctify them through thy truth. Sanctify them through my law. Thy word is true. Thy law is true. Come on. Verse 19. Verse 18. 19. 19. And for this sake, for, and, for their sake, and for their sakes, I sanctified myself. I cleansed myself. That they also might be sanctified through the truth. That they might be sanctified through the what? Through the truth. But hold on. So he cleansed himself that we might be sanctified through the law. How is the law done away with? Wow. Bangles right there. That's a banger. Read it again. I don't understand what he just said. Read it again. It says, for their sake. For their sake. I sanctified myself. I cleansed myself. That they also might be sanctified through the truth. How did he sanctify himself? Through the truth. So he sanctified himself through the law. Through the law. So he also sanctified us through the way. How the hell are we going? Why are we going? Why? Why? It's the only way we can be sanctified. That's the only way. Give me John chapter 10 verse 1 on, the, on that right there, with that one right there. Give me John chapter 10 verse 1. Watch this. The book of John chapter 10 and verse 1. Read. It says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold. And that ye not not by the door of the sheepfold, meaning going through the truth, read. But climb up some other way. You want to go another route. The same as the thief and a robber. The same as the thief and a robber. So if you don't go, if you don't sanctify yourself through God's laws, you a thief and you're what? A robber. You a thief and a robber. Meaning you cannot get in the kingdom of what? You see, that. see that right there? So that, that gives it to you right there. Give me uh go back to first Timothy's. I want to read four and verse five. And then I want Acts chapter nine, verse ten. Go back to 1 Timothy and read 4 and verse 5. The book of 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 5. Come on. For it is sanctified by the word of God in prayer. If thou put the brethren in remembrance of these things, thou shalt be a good minister of Jesus Christ. That's all I want is 5. So read it 5 again. Verse 5. For it is sanctified by by the word of God in prayer. So now let's go to uh, Acts chapter 9, and I want 10 through 16. Now watch this. I'm going to show you something. Because a lot of our brothers, I forgot I wrote this out like this. A lot of our brothers don't think Paul's writings is, uh, what they say, canon. They, a lot of brothers think Paul's writings don't count. Paul's writings count more than you can ever know. And I'm going to prove it to you right here. Watch what he says. Read what you got. This is the book of Acts, chapter 10, verse 16. Read. This was done thrice, and the vessels mm -hmm. are... 9 and 10. Acts 9 and verse 10. Oh, Acts 9 and 10. Acts 9, verse 10. And there was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias. And to him said the Lord in a vision, Ananias. And he said, Behold, I am here, Lord. And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the streets which is called Straight, and inquire in the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tarsus. For behold, he prayeth, mm -hmm. and hath seen in a vision a man named Ananias coming in, and put his hand on it, that he might receive the sight. Read. Then Ananias answered, Lord, and answered, Lord, I have heard many of, of I have heard many of this man, how much evil he have done. To thy saints of Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. And here he has authority from the chief priest to bind all that call on thy name. But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me. He's a what? He is a chosen vessel unto me. Read. To bear my name before the Gentiles. To bear my laws before the Gentiles, read. And kings and the children of Israel. Read. For I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. So stop. You see that right there? 
So, what what did God just tell Paul? What did God just tell Paul? He told him it was a man coming. It was a uh, that he that he was chosen. That he was chosen. Mm -hmm. So God said nice. he's a chosen vessel of me, right? So God said that I chose him. Christ is telling him I chose him specifically. God told me him right there. And then I said, hold on, Lord. He'll be in, he'll do many bad things, man. Lord, he was having people killed. Yeah. God says, move it on, brother. Shh. It's not your choice. Who choice is it? It's the Lord for choice. See, our brothers get that confused right there. Don't listen to it. Don't listen to George. George ain't nothing. Well, Christ is dealing straight with George. Was he dealing straight? Look, who did God, God call Ananias first, right? But why did God make Paul stronger than Ananias? Ananias is the one that taught Paul. But he made Paul stronger than Ananias. How many books did Ananias get? Paul got almost the whole what? Yeah, the whole almost the whole New Testament, bro. See what I mean? And then I was like, oh Lord, but he but he did exactly what God said. We're showing that Ananias was a good soldier in God. But the whole thing what he was doing was he was teaching somebody that he felt like, I don't really teach this dude. Yeah. Let me show y'all something real quick. Hold on. I want to go down here. I'm going to go down here to verse 23. I want to show y'all something real quick. I know I'm going off a little bit of topic, but I want to go down here to 23 and talk about Paul for a minute. Watch this. Look at that. Yeah, 9 and 23. Yes, sir. And after that many days were fulfilled, the Jews took counsel to kill him. But their laying waiting was but their laying awake was known as Saul. And they watched at the gate today and night to kill him. Uh -huh. Then the disciples took him by night and let him down by the wall in a basket. When Saul was coming to Jerusalem, he essayed to join himself to the disciples. Read. But they were all afraid of him. They was what? They were all afraid of him. Read. And believed not that he was a disciple. Stop. They was all afraid of it, bro. And they believed not that he was a disciple. What changed their mind? The works he put in. Mm -hmm. he, he said it to him. Yeah. He's talking about how much work he put in. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. The works that he put in, it, it showed you that once they once they start seeing them put in work, yep. at first they didn't trust them. But once they start seeing them put in work, they could not deny yep. that God had chose them. Just like God chose them. You got to remember, when God, when God went past the coast, where uh, he picked up the two brothers, Simon and Peter, right? Uh -huh. He picked up the two brothers. The two brothers, what was they doing? Fishing. They was fishing. What you think they was fishing for before Christ came in their life? Catfish. All praise is the most high. <laughs> All praise is the most high. All praise is the most high. All praise is the most high. Anything you talk about, we got happy. We just grabbed this in. Right. Yeah. So this, this, is, this is truth. This is facts. Mm -hmm. But when Christ came in their life, he made them fishers of what? Men. Men. He made them fishers of men. Mm -hmm. He used the crap that they knew and broke it down to them in that way, in that manner, to show them that this is how I need you to catch men, to bring them into the truth. Can we catch men in any type of, can we use, put any kind of debate on earth and try to catch men? No. That's why we must all get better in our craft, men and women. You you women gotta get better in your craft. How can we attract more women? Mm -hmm. What can we do to make women understand that they're beautiful without all the cumbrellas and uh all the haughty dressing? Mm -hmm. How can they make themselves more beautiful? Mm -hmm. Us men gotta make sure we gotta make men understand that, bro. 
You are kings on the earth, and not not you, not in that, not in your dirty, dingy clothes you got on right now. We're not talking about that, brother. We're not talking about you. You. It don't matter how good brothers can fight. It don't matter how uh, uh, good they look. How many women you can pick up. We got to show them that they can actually walk in these laws, and you can do it without sinning. That's our job. Everybody got that. That's right. All right, you go. Okay. Right. Y'all look like y'all miserable over it. Alright, so let's go back. Let's go to the Acts. Give me Acts chapter 15. And I'm on verse 19. The book of Acts, chapter 15, verse 19. Now watch this, guys. Read. This is and now what did I just show y'all in the New Testament about the clean and unclean fish, right? Right. And and, and parable also goes into clean and unclean brothers as well. Because you remember Christ said he was going to make them fishermen or what? Oh, man. And so I showed you the scripture means double. Okay? Go. All right. Now watch this. Read what you got. Wherefore my sentence is that we trouble them not, we, tr we trouble not them which from among the Gentiles are turned unto God. Read. But that we write unto them that they abstain from pollution of idols. Pollutions of idols. And from fornication. And from fornications. And from things strangled. Read. And from blood. And blood. Now, so, now with that being said, God, he, right here, God's told them to abstain from pollutions of idols, fornication, things strangled, and, uh, from and, and from blood. Now, watch this. Give me uh, Genesis chapter 9 and 4 again. Genesis chapter, Genesis chapter 9, verse 4. The book of Genesis chapter 9 and verse 4. But flesh with the life, it says, but flesh with the life thereof, which is the blood thereof, shall ye not eat. Shall ye not what? Shall ye not eat. You see that? So it's the same thing, that's the same law that Paul was teaching them right here. He was teaching them the, the dietary law. He was teaching them not to eat blood. Right. So the law of eating blood was not done away. Right. It was not done away with yeah. it. So in, the, in, in Christianity, they don't understand these things. Everybody got that? That's right. All right, so with that, let's go back. Give me Deuteronomy chapter 14, verse 21, please. Deuteronomy chapter 14, verse 21. Book of Deuteronomy chapter 14 and verse 21. We almost done, guys. Read. Ye shall not eat of anything that dieth of itself. Ye shall not eat anything that dieth of itself. Thou shalt give it unto the strange. Thou shalt give it unto the other nations that is in thy gates. That is in thy gates. That he may eat it. That he may eat it. Watch this. For thou mayest sell it unto an alien. An alien is the other nations. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. Read. Thou shalt not seed a kid in his mother's milk. Now I want to make a point here that I just I didn't have in this class, but I'm gonna make a point. We're gonna read this one more time, and I'm gonna stop you, Officer George. When I say stop, stop right there. Go ahead, read it one more time. Watch this. From the top of twenty. Yes, sir. Ye shall not eat of anything that dieth of itself. Thou shalt give it. Unto the stranger that is in thy gates, that he may eat it, Read. or thou mayest sell it unto an alien. Stop. So we can't sell catfish. We can't catch fish and sell it to the other way. Mm -hmm. and we can't do that. We can catch uh, different fish and sell it to the other nation. Crab, lobster. Yeah, we, we, we can catch that. Catch it, sell it. And we can sell it to them. How long we don't eat it? Right. How long we don't ingest it? Right. We can sell it to the other nations. Right there, didn't God just say that? Yes, indeed. He said you can get, you can give it to the, you can sell it to the other nations. Mm -hmm. You just don't eat it. I just want to make that point. Everybody got that. Yeah. All right. Because you ain't, hey, you, if you're a good catfish fisher, go, go, get, go, go catch 40 catfish you and sell, money. make you some money. Sell three dollars a damn fish. Whatever. Yeah. Make you some money. That's $120. We might do that. No way. Shoot, that's a max to yeah, That's a max That's we can raise some money for the school. I'm telling you. <laughs> You're not fish. Yeah. Okay. 
Yeah, so does the white boys. <laughs> Brown brothers, these. I don't even want to say my brothers. No, I, I don't. We no, we don't. We're other nations, nations not to our people. Our yeah. praises, you. Also, you you're the spirit. <laughs> All right. Um, I'm sorry, guys. I got to go back to first Timothy 4 and 5 and 6. No, I don't. Go to Colossians 2 and 16. Let's just go to Colossians 2 and 16. We just go there. Colossians 2 and 16. All right, we get down to the end of the class, guys. We almost done. We got about 15 minutes at the most. All right. Thank y'all for coming and join us today. Colossians 2 and 16. This is also what goes on in the Christian church. Watch this. This is the book of Colossians, chapter 2, verse 16. And let no man therefore judge you in meat. Meat. Or in drink. Or in drink. Or in respect of an holy day. Read. Or of the new moon. Or the Sabbath. Day. I'm sorry, y'all. I wrote this class over a month ago. I wrote this class over a month ago. And I know Bishop just went through this. I just see you go through this. I'm telling you, I'm not copying it. I just wrote, I wrote this over a month ago. I'm this dietary class right here. I wrote this when I was in the hospital when I got diagnosed with the diabetes. Mm -hmm. I so it let you know that it was almost two months ago. It's been a while since I wrote this class. And I said, damn, it, 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 I, was, I guess I was in the spirit, all oh, crazy. <laughs> and now, now watch this, so I, I know he explained, I already explained it. So give me Ezekiel chapter 45, verse 17. So it said, let no man judge you. Let no man therefore judge you in meat or drink or in respect of holy days or new moons, or Sabbath days. Watch this, read with you. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 45, verse 17. And it shall be the prince's part to give burnt offerings and meat offerings and drink offerings and the feast. Hold on, slow, read that a little slow. I'm sorry, I'm officer. Sorry. I want everybody to understand. And it shall be the prince's part to give burnt offerings and meat offerings. Burnt offerings? Well, we talk about and meat offerings, which is the burnt offerings, read. And drink offerings. And drink offerings. In the feast. And the feast days. And in the new moon. That's, that's the holy days and the new moon. Read. And in the Sabbath. And in the Sabbath. Read. In all, so, uh, in, uh, in all solemnities uh -huh. of the house of Israel, uh -huh. he shall prepare the sin offering and the meat offering. Read. And the burnt offering. Uh -huh. And the peace offering. And the peace offering, come on. To make reconciliation for the house of Israel. So when it says don't let no man respect you in meat offerings, drink offerings. Hold on real quick. When it says let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of holy days, meaning uh, Sabbath days or uh, feast days, or in the new moons or the Sabbaths, right? When it's saying that, it's not saying that you can just eat anything you want. You got the scripture messes up. That's why we went to Ezekiel 45 and we're reading down to explain to you that we had to do this when we was in the uh when we was uh, still sacrificing. Mm -hmm. We had to bring, we had to do meat offerings. We had to do drink offerings. We had to do these on the Sabbaths, the new moons, and the feast days. Or if you go to uh, Ecclesiastical festival days. Right. All right. So we had to do these things, right? So go ahead, read. Uh, still in Ezekiel. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It says, Wherever you left off. It says, thus, I'm going at verse 18. Thus saith the Lord God, in the first month and in the first day of the month, thou shalt take a young bullock without blemish and cleanse the sanctuary. Read. And the priest shall take the blood of the sin offering and put it upon the post of the house. And upon the four corners of the of the settle of the altar, and upon the post of the gate of the inner court, and so thou shalt do the seventh day of the month for every one that heareth, and for him that is simple, so shall ye reconcile the house. Verse twenty one. Great. And in the first month, in the fourteenth day of the month, Great. ye shall have the Passover. A feast, a, f a feast of seven days unleavened bread shall be eaten, and upon that day shall the prince prepare for himself and for all the people in the land a bullet for a sin offering. 
three and seven days of the peace he shall prepare a burnt offering to the Lord. Seven bullocks. Seven bullets. And seven rams. Seven rams. Without blemish. Three. Daily the seven days. And a kid. A kid goat. Daily for a sin offering. And he shall prepare a meat offering of an ephah mm -hmm. for a bullock. And an ephah for a ram. And a hen of oil for an ephah. Three. In the seventh month, in the fifteenth day of the month, Shall ye do the like in the feast of the seven days? See, feast of the seven days, come on. According to the sin offering, according to the burnt offering, and according to the meat offering, and according to the oil. Okay, so that's why when you go to Colossians 2, 16, read that again. The book of Colossians, verse 2, chap, uh, verse six, uh, chapter 2, verse 16. Let no man therefore judge you in meat, meat. or in drink. Drink. Or in respect of a holy day. Because now you are, Christ is your what? Sacrifice. So you don't have to offer those things no more because Christ is your sacrifice. Mm -hmm. So that's why Colossians 2.16, when we go to Ezekiel 45 and 17, is explaining the meat, the drink, the, the, uh, the offerings. Mm -hmm. To break that down, to show you that, see, we don't do them things no more, so we don't sacrifice no more. So when it says... Uh, you, uh, if a person have respect to person, because the Christian church says, see, you don't have to, you don't have to do this or that no more. They try right. to confuse it that's with, it with, with that, and that's not the way. That's not what he's talking about. Mm -hmm. So that's the reason why. So now let's go on. I hope everybody made. I made sense to everybody that. I hope I didn't roll yeah. too much to ramble too much through word. Give me Hebrews chapter ten. Hebrews chapter ten and verse one, please. I'm sorry, Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 1. Watch this. The book of Hebrews chapter 10, verse 1. For the law, having a shadow of good things to come, Three. and not the very image of the things, can never with those sacrifices which they offered year by year continually make the comers learn to perfect. It's because the sacrifice wasn't making us perfect. What was we doing? We were sacrificing it, what? Continue to sin. We just continue to sin. Mm -hmm. So we'll go put two pigeons on our. We just kill two pigeons for nothing. Yeah. They have pigeons over at Bad Mom. They had them in the basket. <laughs> <They have. laughs> went, Why you put me on the grill like that, bro? You can go continue to sin. So they wouldn't do it that for me. Come on. <laughs> it says, For then, would they not have ceased to be offered? Read. Because that the worshippers once purged. Should have had no more conscience of sin. So when they was clean, when they was cleansed from their sins, they should have no more conscience of sin. But read. But in those sacrifices, there is a remembrance again made of sins every year. Yes, so come on. For it is, for it is not possible that the blood of bulls and goats and bulls and goats sin can take away sin. Read. Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he says, sacrifice and offerings, thou of what is not. But a body hast thou prepared me. Read. In burnt offerings and in sacrifices for sin, thou hast had no pleasure. So he's already said he have no pleasure no more. Read. Then said I, Lo, I come in the volume of the book. Read. It is written of me. Uh huh. To do thy will, O God. Read. Above, when he said, Sacrifice and offerings and burnt offerings and offerings for sin, thou wouldest not, neither had pleasure therein. Which are offered by the law. So that's the good thing. That was the shadow of good things to come where we're not going to sacrifice no more. Christ was going to be our sacrifice. Read. Watch this. Verse 9. Then said he, Lo, I come to do thy will, O God. And so I said, I come to do thy will. I uh, will. Psalm chapter 40, verse 8. The will is the God's laws. Read. I come to do the God's laws. Read. He taketh away the first. He took away the first testament, the first covenant. Read. That he may establish the second. That he established the new testament. The first te the first uh, covenant was the covenant of what? Sacrifice. The second co uh, covenant was the covenant of what? Grace. I, which is, give me the uh, second covenant with uh, John chapter 1 and verse 17. Watch this. John chapter 1, verse 17. For the law was given by Moses. But the law was given, the law of what? Sacrifice was given by Moses. But grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. But the grace for mercy and truth came by Jesus Christ. 
So that that was the covenant that came. Grace and what? Truth. So God had mercy on us. No need to get ourselves together. Not mercy for you to keep sinning. Mm -hmm. You know, if somebody's whooping your butt, you want mercy for them to get back get off of you, man. Them licks is starting to hurt. Yeah. You want mercy, you want relief from the licks hitting you upside your head. Right? So say he gets off of you and stop hitting up outside your head and you shoot him. See, why didn't he give you why didn't he give you mercy for? He just gave you mercy to get yourself to what? He, hey, I ain't no, I ain't I could beat you to death, right? Right? But he gave you mercy off that ground, right? And what you turn around and do? You turn around and kill him. You turn around and kill him. That's the same thing we do with Christ, if that makes sense. Christ died on the cross for our sins. He gave us mercy. He gave us grace. Time to get ourselves together. But we continue in what? We turn back around and kill them again. Right. Makes sense? Mm -hmm. All right. Let's go back to verse 10. I mean, verse 10, yeah. Uh, Hebrew. Yes, sir. 10 and 10. It says, by the which will we are, it says, by the which will we are sanctified through the offerings of the body of Jesus Christ. For, for, we, for, all. for once and all, so we, uh, we are offered by the body of Jesus Christ once and all, so we don't, we don't sacrifice no more. Sacrifice is done away with. Give me Proverbs chapter 9 verse 5. We got two more scriptures, guys. Proverbs chapter 9 verse 5. I want Proverbs 9. I want 5 and 6, Officer George. Book of Proverbs chapter 9 and verse 5. Yes, sir. Come, ye eat of my bread and drink of my wine which I have mingled. Just read it again. Verse 5. Come, eat of my bread. Come and eat of my bread. And drink of the wine which I have mingled. Come on. Verse 6. Forsake the foolish. Forsake the foolish. And live. And what? And live. So that the bread Christ is talking about is what? The law. All praises. The bread Christ is talking about is the law. All right? Uh, to prove that real quick, give me Ecclesiasticus. I think it's 15 and 2. Ecclesiasticus 15 and 2. I think you can read one, though. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 15. In verse one, one. Yes, sir. he that feareth the Lord will do good, and he that hath the knowledge of the law shall obtain her. Verse two, and as a mother shall she meet you. Meet oh, no. as a, oh no, where you at? Please ask a fifteen. Please ask a fifteen. Fifteen verse doesn't start in the verse two. Oh no, let me get there with you. All right, Ecclesiasticus. Start with verse three. Verse three. Please ask us with the Sirach, chapter fifteen, verse three. With the bread of understanding. With the bread of understanding. Shall she feed him? Read. And give him the water of the wisdom of to drink. So you see that the water, the bread is understanding, and just like the water is wisdom, the wine is what? Said wine. Yeah, it says in the uh, Proverbs ninety five it says wine. So the water and the uh, wine is what? It's similar. It's the same thing. It's giving it's giving you the same thing. Right here it says, read that again. It says, with the bread of understanding shall she feed him, and give him the water of wisdom to drink. Okay, so that water of wisdom to drink is the same thing. I'm telling you, like the wine. He's saying the wine, the water. Symbolic, same thing, okay, of understanding. That's all it's talking about. All right, so let's go back real quick and <laughs> let me get, give me Isaiah, I mean, Proverbs, read verse 6 again. Proverbs 9 and 6, one more time. The book of Proverbs, chapter 9, verse 6. Forsake the foolish and live and go in the way of understanding. So it says, forsake the foolish and live. So, y'all understand, when God says forsake the foolish, why is he telling you to forsake the foolish, guys? Why is he telling you to forsake the foolish? It's not going to last. It's not going to what? It's going to an end. It's going to come to an end, all praises. So, when you, you got, when, so when it says forsake the foolish, 
That means anybody that is not doing God's laws, he means get away from them. Everybody understand that? For Satan, dog, foolish. It's anybody just not doing his laws. All right? Let's go from her. Give me uh, Isaiah 55 and 1. The book of Isaiah, chapter 55. Verse 1. Oh, everyone that thirsteth, come ye to the waters, and he that hath no money, come ye by and eat ye. Come by wine, milk without money, and without price. Alright, so now that that there you go. That that's that's why I'm down. I mean you, you notice I'm explaining the what? The wine now. All right, so now let's go back to it one more time. I was doing from the beginning. Let me get there. Isaiah 55 and 1. Let me go there. Come on. The book of Isaiah chapter 55 verse 1. Oh, everyone that thirsteth, come ye to the waters. Three. And he that hath no money. What is the waters? Uh, I'll, I'll praise it. The water is understanding and wisdom. Mm -hmm. Where can we get it? Where can we find this scripture at? Rock 15. Yep. Is it Rock 15? Uh, three. No. Three. I'll praise you. You got it, though. I'll praise you. Also, let's go to Revelations. Let's go to Revelations 22. Let's go to Revelations 22. Let's, let's, uh, let's see if we get uh, 22 in. Uh, let me look at it. 22 and 1, I think it is, Officer George. Let me get there first. Revelations 22 and 1. Let me see if we get that. Yeah, Revelation 22 and 1. Read that book. of Revelation chapter 22 and verse 1. All right, all right. And he showed me. Slow, slow, officer. Slow, go ahead, go ahead. He showed me a pure river of water. And he showed me a pure river of water. He showed me, he showed me a pure river of water. With a river of water of life, crystal as uh, clear as crystal. Clear as crystal. Proceeding out of the throne of God. Okay, so he, he so watch this. Go ahead. And of the Lamb. And the, and of the Lamb. So the water that he showed him, right, was for well, the water of life. What is the water of life? What is what is life in the Bible? Give me a scripture for life. Somebody give me a scripture for life. Life. Proverbs. No, no, it ain't no life. Baru. Baru what? Baru. Let me see where we at. I'm gonna give you a second. I'm gonna give you a second while I'm doing this anyway. Baru, I'll give y'all a couple of seconds. Officer George? I know you know this. But yep, he's on it. It's probably one of my favorite ones. It is one of your favorite. I don't believe you don't get it. <laughs> what you say? You got you just had it. I heard you. Four. I said four. I yeah, that's it. that's it. Go to it. Look at it. Yeah, I'm looking now. I got ripped. I'm uh, yeah. I, I got ripped all over again. Yeah. This Bar piece has come to me, but. Uh, Baruch 4 and 1. Yeah, 4 and 1. He's right. on it. Yeah. Read it, Bobby. The book of Baruch, chapter 4, verse 1. Three. This is the book of the commandments of God. Three. And the law that endures forever. Three. All they that keep it shall come to life. There you go. All they that keep it shall come to life. Three. But such. Is leave it shall die. Okay, so now let's go back to where we was. Let's go back to where we was. Read what you got. Oh no, Revelation 22. Yeah, Revelation 22 and 1. He showed me a pure river of water of life. Of life. So he showed him what? Understand the, the laws. Read, come on. Clear as crystal. Clear, clear as crystal. Proceeding out of the throne of God and of the land. So see, God can give that, that water to whoever he was. Well, too many boats, read. Come on. He says in verse 2, in the midst of the street of it, and on either side of the river, three. was there the tree of life. Who? Which bare twelve manner of fruit. Read. And yielded her fruit every month. Come on. And the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nation. Of us. Of us. It was the healing for us. And also the nations that is going to be our slaves. 
Because you got to remember, those nations got to do God's what? They got to do laws. They got to do his laws too. So when they come into this fold, when they come into this fold, meaning being our handmaids and our, or our maids and handmaids, uh, they got to learn God's what? They got to learn his laws because they got to come and they got to do the Passovers. They got to do the Sabbaths. They got to do the new moves. They got to do the uh, uh, tabernacles. They Everybody got to do it on earth or die. There's no other way around it. Some people crying there, uh, I don't want to do God. You ain't got to worry about it. Two thirds you Negroes going to die anyway. Two thirds y'all cut off anyway. So we ain't got to worry about it. So let's go back to where we was. Isaiah 55 and. You remember today's class was what? Improving your physical and mental health. The last point was the mental. I'm sorry, it's short, but it's powerful. <laughs> Go back to 55 and 2, read what you got. The book of Isaiah chapter 55, verse 2. Come on. Wherefore do ye spend money? Wherefore do you spend money for that which is not bread? Three. And your labor for that which satisfies not. Three. Hearken diligently unto me. Hearken diligently unto, uh, diligently unto me. And eat ye that which is good. Three. And let your souls delight itself in fat. You see, so he said, eat that which is good. He's talking about the what? The law. So you got to remember, where is that at? Uh, give me Ezekiel chapter 3, verse 1. Ezekiel chapter 3, verse 1. He said, eat that which is good. Watch this. But Ezekiel chapter 3, verse 1. Yes. Moreover, he said unto me, son of man, eat that thou, that thou findest. Eat that what thou findest. Eat this roll. Eat this roll. Talking about the Bible. And go speak unto the house of Israel. So he said, eat this, get, eat, eat this understanding. Meaning, learn this understanding and go speak unto the house of Israel. Let's go back to verse uh, 3. 55 and 3. Isaiah. Isaiah. I keep on losing my place. Isaiah 55, verse 3. Three. Incline your ears. Incline your ears. And come unto me. Hear, and your soul shall live. Three. And I will make an everlasting covenant with you. Three. Even the sure mercies of David. Come on. Behold, I have given him for a witness to the people, a leader and a commander. A leader and a commander to the people. Read. Verse 5. Behold. Thou shalt call a nation that thou knowest not. Read. And nations that knew not thee shall run unto thee because of the Lord thy God. And so he said, I'm going to call a nation that thou knewest not because we didn't know he was Israel. We didn't know he was God's people. Read. And for the Holy One of Israel. Shalom. Read. For he hath glorified thee. Read. Seek ye. The Lord, while he may be found. Seek ye the Lord, while he may be found. Three. Call ye. Hold on, what do you say? Seek ye the Lord, while he may be what? While he may be found. Three. Call ye upon him, uh -huh. while, while he is near. Three. Let the wicked forsake his way. No, I, go back, go back. Seek, you read that again, verse 6, and hold it right Isaiah, there. Isaiah 55, verse 6. Read. Seek ye the Lord. While he may be found. Uh, it's all I want. Watch this. Everybody watch this. Let's go to Luke. Let's go to Luke. Where is it at? I got to find it real quick. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Where is it, John? Let me find it, John. Let me find it, John. Let me see. Shortly, I'm gonna have to leave him off on this bus. He uh, leaves from uh, I'm gonna take it, I'll take it out. Gonna take me out, yeah. Okay, yeah, another ball. We have the bird, yeah. All good, right. good. All right, all right. Uh, John chapter 12, John chapter 12, verse 35. I'll take you out before we go. Okay, all right, I got you. John chapter 12, verse 35. But with John chapter 12, verse 35, Three. then Jesus said unto them. Yet a little while is the light with you. Read. Walk while ye have the light. If we see that, walk, uh, it says, Then Jesus said unto them, Yet a little while, while the light, while the law is with you, walk while ye have the light. Walk while you have the law. Watch this, read. Walk while ye have the light. Lest darkness Let sin come upon you. 
For he that walketh in darkness, he that walketh in darkness, knoweth not whether he goeth. You don't know where you're going. While he hath light, believe in the light. If you have light, while you have the laws, believe in the laws. That you may be the children of light. That you may be the children of the laws. So let's go back to Isaiah. Let's go back to Isaiah 55 and uh, 6 and see if they're saying the same thing. Read it again. Book of Isaiah chapter 55 verse 6. It's saying similar. Read. Seek ye the Lord. Seek ye the Lord. While he may be found. While he may see that's the light. God is seek the law. The Lord is the law. Seek the law while it may be found. Read. Call ye upon him. Call ye upon him. Read. While he is near. Come on. Let the wicked forsake his way. Let the wicked Go away from his ways. Read, leave his ways alone. Read. And the unrighteous man is thought. Let the unrighteous man let go of those evil thoughts. Read. And let him return to the Lord. Let him come back to God. Read. And he will have mercy upon you. And him. God will have mercy upon you, brothers and sisters. Read. And to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. He's going to abundantly pardon us from our sins. Isaiah 11 and 6. Isaiah chapter 11, verse 6. Watch this. Last scripture, Isaiah 11 and 6. Watch this. Book of Isaiah, chapter 11 and verse 6. So let's get it. Come on. The wolf also shall dwell with the lamb. So when, when, these, when that time comes, the wolf is going to dwell with the lamb. And the leopard shall lie down with the king. Next to a goat. So you know the end times is here when a wolf is going to lay next to a lamb and a goat is gonna lay next to a uh, uh, lay next to a leopard, read, and the calf, and the calf, and the young lion, it read, and the fatling together, it read, and a little child shall lead, and, and uh, all this, all those mean animals that we'll see on earth, they're gonna be back tame again, and a little kid is gonna lead them, read, a baby, a baby, a baby, a toddler is gonna lead them all around. And they ain't gonna do nothing. They won't even hurt it. They won't. They not gonna hurt him at all. Watch this, read. And the cow. Because it's not gonna be nothing to protect nothing from no more. Yeah. Everything is gonna be back as it was at the beginning. What no alligators are attacking men. Yeah. What no lion attacking men. What no goat. That's how you think. How you think? I, I mean, uh, how you think Noah was able to put all those animals on that ship without? Because you no, know nothing was eating blood then. Yeah. They wasn't desiring blood. Right. They wasn't. They, their thoughts was not controlled as today's thoughts. The animal thoughts today, you get that an animal, he's gonna rip you to shreds. Mm -hmm. Back then, in the beginning, those animals didn't have those thoughts. Their thoughts was they were they was afraid of you they, because you was men. That's right. They was afraid of you, so they were not gonna bite you. They were not gonna even come back. You tell them, come on, they go. They just gonna run over. Mm -hmm. Read verse seven. And the cow and the and the bear shall feed. The cow and the bear shall feed. Their young ones shall lie down together. Read. And the lion shall eat straw. The lion shall eat straw. Like the ox. Like the ox. Y'all see that thing right there? So that's what's going to happen right there. The lion's going to eat straw like the ox. Read verse 8. And the suckling child shall play on the hole of the ass. And the ass is a cobra snake. So a, a suckling child, a little baby, mm -hmm. with a pacifier in his mouth, mm -hmm. he's going to be playing with a cobra. Right. Read. And the wean child. And the wean child, the, the one that's not on, on, on breast milk, read. Shall put his hand on the cockatrice. It's so yeah. on, the, on the cockatrice, which is a poisonous what? Snake. Watch. Read. And they shall not hurt, nor destroy in all my holy mountain. For the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. See, because God, you know that he said the earth should be full of the knowledge of God because the animals is going to have the commandments not to touch a human. Yep. And they're going to, and none accede over what God says. That's right. So we are TTIC. I thank y'all brothers and sisters for joining us today and I hope y'all got something out of today's class. And with that, we'll say shalom. shalom.